Okay, good afternoon, dignitaries and students. I guess I'm audible now. Yes, yes, audible, audible. We can start. Good. Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology in association with Sarkashetra Cultural, Academic and Charitable Center managed by CMI Fathers has organized IIST Adarate Schools Program 2020 titled Beyond the Horizon. It's a five days program which begins now with an inaugural ceremony. Let's begin this inauguration session with a silent prayer. Father Alex Pryculum CMI, our beloved director of Sargashetra Cultural, Academic and Charitable Center is here with us. He will be addressing welcoming the gathering father please yes a warm good afternoon to one and all Yes, Father, you are yes. audible. It is with great joy that Indian Institute of Space and Science and Technology and Sarkashetra organized this webinar series for the students from class 10, 11, and 12. Sarkashetra is an academic, charitable, and cultural center established in the year 2002 inspired by the vision and heritage of St. Kuryakos Elias Chawra, one of the founding fathers of CMI Foundation. The CMI fathers have been actively engaged in providing holistic and you? integral development to ahead. individuals through education and socio-cultural activities. Sarkashetra undertakes various activities in three different sectors charitable, cultural, and academic with a motto a better person for a better society. The Sarkashetra also has previous history of organizing workshops for the students to motivate them in subjects related to space science and to offer them opportunities to interact with the great scientists and academies of IAST. These workshops also help the students gain knowledge in laboratory experience and space observation. With a great privilege, I now welcome the dignitaries for their valuable presence. First of all, let me invite Professor B.K. Darwal, Director IAST. It is not the very first time that Darwal sir is associating with Sarkashetra. And so I can assure you that his presence will be a great help for the for you students. I now welcome Professor Kuribala Joseph, Dean, Student Activities and Welfare, IST. Kuribala sir has always helped Sarkashetra organize various workshops for the students in association with the IAST. Let me now welcome Professor Krishnamurti sir, Registered IAST and for Sebastian teacher of CMI, Peyton Sarkashetra for their wholehearted support for the success of this program. It is now time for me to welcome the program coordinators, Dr. Shaijumon CS, Assistant Professor IAST, and team members of Sarkashetra who help organize this beautiful platform for the students. Dr. Lejin Muri and CMI, Ms. Marina Sibi, Ms. Jeffin Jo Thomas, and Mrs. Nimi Joseph 
are offered a lot of support in organizing this program. I welcome all of them. Last but not the least, I welcome all of all my dear students to this webinar series. Hope this program will be helpful to each and every one of you to develop and interact with the space science science. I wish you everyone a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Professor Kurvila Joseph, PhD, FRSC, doing research in the field of nanomaterials, polymers, and composites, and has headed the Department of Chemistry at Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, and is presently the Senior Professor and Dean at the Institute and Welfare IIST. He has done postdoctoral at the Federal University of Paraiba, Brazil, and Swedish Institute of Composites, Sweden. He did PhD from the Regional Research Laboratory, CSIR, Thiruvanthapuram, in collaboration with School of Chemical Sciences, Mahatma Gandhi University, Kotin. His H index is 51 and item index is 155. He has more than 11,000 citations to his credit. Besides, he has published four academic books by international publishers as author, editor, and published 25 book chapters. And he has been invited as speaker for hundreds of national and international conferences. He has three patents and more than 200 publications in international journals. The academicians has produced 20 PhDs and several master projects. He has also been deemed worthy of several esteemed awards and honors. Professor Shiva Prasad Award 2000, the Young Scientist Award 2000, the Mathias Award 95, the Higher Certification of Merit 94, Young Scientist Award 93 are just few of them. With so much of proudness, I invite Professor Kurumila Joseph Sir to tell these little students about IIST at the Ray Schools. Sir, please. Hello. <clears throat> yeah, thank you so much uh, for the uh, nice introduction. I'm extremely happy to uh, uh, participate in this uh, ninth edition of IAST at schools. Uh, in fact, uh, we conducted one IAST at school program in association with the Sarkashetra uh, two years back our director and all our faculty members uh, attended the program. It was an excellent uh, program. That's why uh, when you have uh, requested us, director was very happy to accept the proposal. And uh, you know that over the uh, five days of this IAST at school program, uh, we are uh, going to deliver, demonstrate various aspects of space science and technology. Starting from the talk from uh, Dr. Vikhe Dadwal, the director of IAST, uh, followed by uh, Dr. Vivian Krishnamurthy, the registrar. And uh, uh, these two people were, these, were really worked with the Indian space program in a different various levels, a director of uh, NRC, director of IARS, and a lot of, lot of activities. So you are, the students are getting a real uh, uh, hands-on experience on various space applications, space programs, and things like that by hearing these two uh, uh, world-renowned space scientists. Followed by, we have another 13 uh, uh, demonstrations and followed by lectures by eminent faculty members of IST covering various areas of uh, space science and technology and uh, those who are registered for this program really lucky to associate with this ISTS school program what i understood is that over 1500 uh, students are registered across the country and uh, i wish all a fruitful discussion throughout the program you may please interact with the faculty members, scientists, and uh, you may get a very clear, good 
clear idea about IAST as well as Indian Space Program. And in addition, what the science, for example, physics or chemistry or maths, how can we use this type of uh, this science in the real space science and technology? That is the interesting part of this uh, program. It's a very unique program. Every year we are conducting one or two programs. And uh, this time, this is the uh, first program. As I told you, that this is our ninth edition of IST school. I, on behalf of all, I express my sincere thanks to the Sarkashetra, also our director and registrar, for uh, uh, accepting this uh, proposal. And I wish all the students a fruitful five days of IST school ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Our beloved patron of Sargashetra, prior of Sacred Heart Monastery, president of this program, Father Sebastian Atichara CMI is with us. With great pleasure, Father, I invite you for the presidential address. Present, good afternoon to one of our distinguished guests of the day, Dr. V.K. Dadwar, Professor Privila Joseph, Professor Krishnamurthy, Honorable Father Alex Prakram, the Director of Sarkit Chetra, professors and dear students. I wish you all the best for the rest of these five days. Currently, we are facing so many difficulties. There are so many strain and stress for us. Mental strain is there. Physical strain is there. We are forced to wear something which was not accustomed to us, which was not so feasible for us so far. But now we have become quite accustomed to. Now we have become quite adjusted to wearing a mask. It has become part of our life. It has become part of our dress code even. And that's how things change. Change is a symptom of life, signal of life too. Change needs to be there. I'm a literature student and even now. I love reading. As I read William Wordsworth, he reminds me, the child is the father of man. Number of students can remind it or remember it from, where is it from? It's from the poem, The Rainbow. And William Wordsworth reminds us, we are all curious. We are all curious. We shall be curious. We must be curious too. And curiosity comes from, I don't know how many of you can remember or how many of you can recollect. The symbol of education is an unending arch. An unending arch is that what depict, depicts our process of in, transforming information, our curiosity that grows. It never ends. Again, Tennyson reminds us, it goes on. The more you know, the more you do not know. That's what is the information. That's what is the knowledge. And now, these five days are given to you. I so personally remember the last year's experience. We had a residential program here at Sargit Chetra, along with IAST. It was so happy. It was a rich experience for all the students. The valedictory function, even now you can reflect the valedictory function. Students, almost all the students shared their experiences. And therefore, this year also, but the modus are quite different. The modus operandi or the working method is going to be a bit different this year. You are comfortably at your home. We are comfortably at ease, but you are going to be together. There are almost more than 1,500 students taking part in this session. And therefore, I wish you all the best. Make use of it. And that's for the better generation. And whatever be your knowledge, whatever you get from these five days, that should be for the betterment of humanity. We work together for the betterment of humanity, science, technology, information, whatever it be. And everything that, that shall work together, that shall go into the betterment of society. May God bless you. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. 
Dr. Vinay Kumar Dadwal is Director, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, that is IIST Trivandrum, and Chairman, Board of Management, mm -hmm. IIST, since July 2016. Previously, he has worked in ISRO from 1983 to 2016, including as distinguished scientist and director of NRSC during 2011-16. Other positions held by him include associate director NRSC 2010-11, dean of IR, IR, IIRS Dehradun. Concurrently, he was director in charge at UN Center for Space Science Technology and Education in Asia and the Pacific as director in charge and head crop inventory and modeling division, Space Application Center, Ahmedabad. Currently, he also serves in board of governors of APJ, APJ Abdul Kalam Technology University, Trivandrum, member Indian Institute of Management Society, Kodikod, governing body of Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune, etc. He is a recipient of many awards, including ISRO Outstanding Achievement Award, Sadhish Dawan Award, ISRS, ISRO Merit Certificate for Contributions to Application of Remote Sensing to Crop Forecasting, ISRO ASI oh, Award for Space idea. Applications by Astronautical oh, Society of India, oh, Hari Om oh, Ashram, oh, Dr. Vikram oh, Sarabhai oh, Award for Space Applications by Physical Research Laboratory, oh, Indian National oh, Remote oh, Sensing oh, Award oh, of oh, ISRS, oh, Young Scientist Medal of Indian National Science Academy, and ISC Young Scientist Award Indian Science Congress Association, Calcutta. There are four more pages of his biodata. And so, with much pleasure, I invite you for the inaugural lecture. Professor VK Dadwa will be doing the inaugural lecture. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you, Marina. Good afternoon, Father. And all my colleagues from IIST. Good afternoon to all young prospective space scientists. Uh, this IIST at schools uh, was proposed and encouraged by our first chancellor, Dr. APJ Kalam. And he wanted that students should be able to spend some time. So we used to get around 200 students and they used to be there for two days plus in IIST. This year, the situation is different. We are passing through a pandemic and a crisis, but learning must not stop. Your career's decisions have to be taken. You have to grow professionally and contribute to the society. We are also, you know, confined to homes and specific places, but still, we want to be with each one of you. So it gives me great pleasure, not only to formally inaugurate uh, this program, IIST at schools beyond the horizon, but also talk to you on why space should be in the uppermost of your thought and a quote from Dr. APJ Kalam, he wrote that these dreams or what we want to achieve is not what we 
see when we are asleep but these are the things which do not allow us to sleep so i want you to sleep but also think about the space so uh, i would formally just take you through a set of slides they are quite light and the hopefully you are able to see the first slide so let us move to what exactly is the critical question all of you have so what is the profession which you would be joining i am sure medicine comes uppermost engineers even liberal education for many of you so i would like to by the end of this lecture suggest to you that whichever profession you do you can still join and contribute to the space so we all would agree or i am sure there would be a poll at some stage that currently humans are in a space age so space has fascinated humans from very early they were all participating into this space or space science through observation from the earth then the telescopes were invented and more closer look could be done there were additional development early in the 20th century the rockets which could leave the earth and go to space were invented so with the launch on 4th october of the first satellite by russians the space age started but space age was just not launching a single satellite outside let us say 100 km which we legally say beyond 100 km from surface is the space below is the air but the space age has slowly crept on us because of the developments in engineering and technology and what are those additional things in a couple of years we could send a human being then which was the yuri gagarin as all of you know then the next stage was we were able to send bigger spacecraft which could see the earth photograph it use it for metrology we could launch longer missions which went to other planets and photograph them we also in within 12 years of the satellite we were able to land on the moon because of the great focus which was given on manned flight and moon landing by the united states of america so the new inventions more engineering continues to be done at least since 1999 1998 was the first launch of the international space station module so when it assembled from 99 and early 2000 onward there is always a human presence outside earth earth is our only home only a board but now there are permanently humans staying outside the earth not the same set but 
a human race is present continuously since 2000 let us say we all children want to be astronaut so there is a very substantial number but still below 300 who have gone to space but now we are just at the corner where private enterprise all of you would have heard of elon musk and what his company does even there would be tourism to space but it is not that we the us president obama said during his space vision by 2030 us or nasa would be trying to send humans to mars and get them back so the space age has slowly crept on us. More importantly, as I would like to point out later, in our daily life, we are heavily dependent on space. All our regular functions, like the navigation, asking a taxi by a app, Ola, or using the DTH to receive the television programs or even going to an ATM and trying to withdraw money. We actually use space. Parallelly, the whole universe and the number of stars and the various phenomena and activities which are taking place, the vastness of space is more understood because of the space technology. So my colleagues will be talking to you about astronomy and astrophysics, about sun, about planets. So not only the space is huge, I would like to suggest to you that space requires specialists as well as all others with interest in space so that space could be a career option. As private industry is becoming more and more involved in space, there would be more and more larger career options for space. So you don't really have to study space. You could study something else. You could study law and do space law. You could study commerce, economics, and still come to space. You could study various disciplines, but from now onward, just think of space and think of how you could contribute to this great human endeavor. So when we think of space, the first thing we think is science. So the space is at the edge and the topmost of science astronomy, astrophysics, space exploration, search for exoplanets. It means planets which are moving around other stars and now almost 6,000 plus exoplanets have been identified. Now the next challenge will be how many of them have atmosphere how many of them are habitable and how human beings could reach there. Parallelly, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence or is there somebody which in the form of literature and movie we call alien, are they there? So that itself is a very, very great scientific and knowledge question which we must answer. So all of those who are interested in science, physics, mathematics, and various other science, including biology. How biological organism live in space or science questions as important as how the life originated on earth. They can be answered or they can be attempted 
with some inputs from space science and technology so in first science and exploration if whatever be your career you please learn space so for new science discoveries evolution and origin of universe evolution of solar system or the origin of life space can be a very important scientific tool to really address these questions let us look as communication today you are participating in this webinar because of the communication technology so communication technology is required because for interacting with satellites or when we have interplanetary missions they must communicate with earth but communication technology is very useful and is served by space from one point on the earth to the other so satellite communication satellite broadcasting all these other applications like the space based education telemedicine all of them are helped by the satellite communication technology the second important aspect of the space is what is called position navigation and timing now you could think of human as a explorer as he walked or as he sailed on the seas or as he tried to go to the north pole or south pole or as he was scaling you know high mountain or he was crossing desert all these things were done before the space age and for all these activities there was great difficulty challenge and human grit to really complete those tasks but all of you would be aware or those of you who have tried to see now global positioning system place any person precisely on one point in the globe so he can tell his location or others can reach his location if it is for search and rescue so the positioning and navigation are very very important applications of space technology we already have positioning based navigation for aircraft aircrafts are able to land by the such space based and ground based technologies precisely even when they can't see when the visibility is very poor or there are other challenges more importantly we are now moving into an era of autonomous vehicles autonomous vehicles in the air uas and drones autonomous cars and so many autonomous navigation all this next generation of mobility will rely on space technology or global positioning system so it has a very simple physical principle the satellite sends a signal which is the time since we know from the satellite where currently it is where it is communicating the time so if we receive more than 3 or more such signals on the earth 
we can do a triangulation and we will know the position there are some challenges of error in positioning due to the intervening with atmosphere moisture ionosphere or other challenges which are then solved by various new technologies of very precise positioning post processing or mobile positioning and other such techniques so that it is possible to locate anybody within 2 to 3 meters on this vast earth whether it is land or ocean human beings are using earth rare earth elements and minerals are getting consumed so would we be able to go out and get resources from outside the earth till now the major resource which comes from outside the earth is the energy of the sun all other resources we have to use on the earth but after we have landed on moon after we have landed on mars the european space agency had a spacecraft mission rosetta which actually landed on a comet philly lander japanese also have a mission ayabusa which is to return samples from comets so obviously we will study the asteroids comets and other planetary objects if we are able to go there and land there at some stage we will be able to come back also and get the resources also if you are able to land and you develop techniques of habitation and the new material processing techniques i am sure many of you would have heard of 3d printing we may be able to process the in situ material on that planet and really create a outpost or really colonize that this may happen next 30 to 50 years so the space so presence and use of space is likely to grow now this would be the time domain of all of you the professional career which may start you know another 5 to 7 years and beyond so in your active professional life there would be resources presence and outposts beyond earth i am sure many of you one way or the other would be connected or contributor to such an exercise so the questions we looked at was do humans need a home in addition to earth are there habitable planets how to build a human colony on another planet how to enhance material resources for humans how to enhance energy resources so as more and more solar power is being used among the various options is if we go outside the earth and receive the solar energy there convert it into energy or electricity then transmit it as a microwave to the earth so can we produce electricity outside the earth and then get it to the for human use there are very serious engineering solutions being thought about it 
now once we understand more about all the celestial objects and you are all aware that meteoroids land on various places on the earth can we protect earth from asteroids and near earth object there are many you know doomsayers which say uh, that a big object can fall on the earth in the earth's history there have been occasions when big space object has fallen sometimes it has created a crater i am sure many of you would be knowing about lonar also many years ago 65 million years ago there was another large impact which created a winter a dust envelope around the earth and many people believe it also led to the disappearance and extinction of dinosaurs so even for protecting the humans on the earth we need to develop technology to protect earth first is to predict the trajectory of each asteroid and near earth object and if we feel it can harm us what technology solution we can have to protect the human race also you are from your science and other background or even from the various article you would know that sun has sun spots sun cycle lot of high energy particles come these energy particles they travel towards earth they can have disruption in electricity and many other human activities communication and others so to predict such space weather phenomena and also to develop preventive measure we actually need space technology so this is just an example produced by the british planetary society where various landings on mars have happened uh so i think uh, i hope i am not occluding this so uh, you can see the currently the insight lander and the proposed february 2021 of the nasa rover perseverance and we will also human beings want to go to venus the challenge there is high temperatures so each planet poses unique challenge of gravity atmosphere temperature so great science and engineering is done for exploring the planets and at some stage it will be very useful knowledge for human beings so that brings us to a space station international space station it was not the first skylab and mir stations were launched earlier they had limited functionality and limited life what is so special about international space station it has collaboration between five nations usa russia japan europe and canada it's a 100 meter by 73 meter structure it has many working quarters it has sleep quarters it has scientific equipment it also has many observation 
equipment earth observation outside it also has been used to launch cube sats so this is a great piece of engineering and technology although at the moment very costly that is why so many nations and agencies have contributing to this there would obviously as technology improves there would be newer versions more capable which you would see many of you can go to the iss site uh, even on youtube you can currently know where it is passing through and in the evenings if it is passing over your area you can view it as a sun reflecting object slowly moving i suggest to all students to learn more about the space station how they can see the live data how they can propose photography which is one way to get involved in the space closer to home the space acts as a eye in the sky to view the earth so earth observation or the remote sensing technology or the use of remote sensing is very very important for the safety of life quality of life even many professions science measurement weather prediction prevention of disaster you range a list of activities that are done by the space based platform which contain various sensors which then measure various parameters there would be a detailed lecture i think by dr krishnamurthy who himself is a remote sensing scientist of the applications of this technology but i will just cover some points because they are closer to your home are very important so for the life on the earth you are all aware of the increase in carbon dioxide and the global and climate change so monitoring climate change whether it is the land use whether it is the ocean or it is the atmospheric chemistry cloud el nino you name anything so even the snow cover the depth of the snow in the poles sea level all such things require space observation next is forecasting weather see weather forecasting if you just want to do now casting you can just look up or may, maybe you can have a radar and do now casting but if you want a two day five day or long term forecast which is required by many people including the farmers if you want accuracy then you must measure the ocean you must measure winds you must measure the vertical profiles of humidity and temperature from ground based sensors it is not possible to cover this entire earth but satellites especially in the geostationary they make it possible so one of the biggest contribution of the space technology has been this great improvement in the weather forecasting of short term medium term and then it leading down to better understanding of earth as a system monitoring of cyclones or typhoons predicting their landfall and time and many such 
extreme events with use of space technology they are forecasting and now casting and developing disaster risk resilience is very very important the other is the sustainable development and protection of environment whether it is the recession of glaciers whether it is deforestation whether it is the depletion of groundwater resources which can be seen by the gravity missions so large number of such things can be seen by the satellite data more importantly we discussed communication you can use communication to do simple things like movement of a bird you know there are birds who do long range migration you can use even to do the migration of whales if you put a small transmitter you can use communication to even know where your ship currently is through various communication and transmitting application and if a ship or a aircraft require search and rescue you can use communication plus navigation to quickly reach and protect also now more importantly is the location information which is the gps or which is also gnss so whether it is the aircraft it is a vehicle asking a taxi or a farmer who is linking a space photography on crop health with the location of his tractor and doing precision farming there are thousands of uses of location information that is why this is very very important application so for the quality of life for safety of life and for many of the actions space is very important space gives pictures pictures have huge information it allows us to understand phenomena it allows us to make measurements you can do analysis and visualization all of them are of great help i will not have detailed space application but just a couple of pictures so that your excitement can be built up for the space technology so these are two very iconic pictures the picture on the left we are all familiar with moon rising but from the moon you can see the earth rising so this led to the earth being called blue marble this picture was taken from apollo mission of nasa and uh, you can see the huge cloud and the vast area covered by the oceans same way when going towards mars a nasa mission looked back and captured both earth and moon together from this picture you can see on which side the sun is the sunlit side and the dark side so this picture has very very large number of interpretation and observation issues there is one of the lecture by my colleague dr rajesh who will talk about what these pictures of the planets tell us about the origin processes and various activities 
on the planetary surface so the eye in the sky covers large areas you can cover the same point multiple times human eye looks in a very small part of electromagnetic spectrum the satellites allow us to look beyond this beyond the human eye observation including by microwave which can penetrate through cloud you can have various spatial spectral radiometric resolution you can measure geophysical things like temperature ranging forest height by lidar gases chemical species in the atmosphere large number of geophysical parameters can be done since a picture is available so you can do a historical analysis plus you can study areas where humans have not reached or humans have not yet established some instrumentation so the earth observation is a very powerful technique uh and it is not one technique it is a range of technique of multiple band hyperspectral band use of microwave to get the surface and dielectric properties use of lidar like the atmospheric lidar to measure the particles in the atmosphere dust cloud and other particles use a surface lidar to measure the height of each building and tree use thermal emissions use altimetry to measure the sea surface height look through the atmosphere to the sun to get the chemical species use microwave ranging to measure the gravity which can even help us in seeing the ground water depletion or flood or the tides or increase in the snow you can measure the output of the sun irradiance photometry outside the earth and you can do the altimetry and scattermetry to know the surface of the ocean and the roughness of the surface of the ocean can actually help you know the near surface winds so you can really measure the winds over the globe by the scattermeter in addition to a large number of applications so why i wanted to show this slide was to tell that the remote sensing technology is huge has innumerable properties and applications and now there are private companies like planet which have small cube sets 200 plus they can cover any part of the globe every day and they collect almost 14 million pictures per day so these pictures were not high resolution so let us look at the high resolution this is a taj mahal which you will recognize taken by world view and you will also see the power of shadows there are people who are standing on the marble and because of the shadow you can see perhaps count how many people were visiting when this picture was taken so as we are passing through this covid and the satellite pictures have mapped the parking lot of various shopping malls which are just vacant which is a indication of no activity so the pictures allow a host of interpretation this is a very important picture which was taken on february 11 by digital globe this high how high resolution picture actually shows the size of the crowd 
in Iran's sorry in Egypt in the Tahrir Square, which led to toppling of the government. So this is the power of imaging. I'll show you a 25 centimeter picture, world view four over Tokyo. You can see the type of objects and it also leads to many type of analysis, which we will not worry at the moment, but you can see the roads, the cars, the marking, the stadium, the type of rooftops, the structures on the rooftops, even the trees with different colors. Now, more and more such pictures are being used in humanitarian crisis. So this is the border of Syria and Jordan. You can see large number of refugees, tents, people on this side of the border waiting to go to the other side. So the space photography has become a tool for transparency, for efficiency, for governance, and global sharing for various applications. This is nearer our home. This is the Dionar dumping ground in Mumbai. So a couple of years ago, when somebody put fire to this landfill site, even the schools had to be shut down. Nobody could move. Such intense was the smoke. This is picture of Antarctica, where a huge ice shelf broke between January and first fortnight of February. You can see a sequence of images. So the red line shows the earlier. You can see how various icebergs have broken and are floating. And the third picture and the fourth picture you can see such a huge area, 2,600 kilometer and thousands of icebergs. Such phenomena will become larger as oceans heat, sea level rises and climate changes. They have very strong influence on navigation and sea level rise. So satellites are a very, very important to, to monitor such thing. This is a daily monitoring of forest fire in India. Each red dot is a fire. So every day, multiple satellite pictures, you measure the forest fire and you can see in March 11,000 fires and daily the location and number is getting counted. This is a, it's a bit old. The very significant part is that 95% of the forest fires in India are man-made. So we need to prevent such fires. And whenever there is a fire, we need to take action so that it doesn't spread and very, you know, e economically important resource forests are not burned. So this is the power because you can't be everywhere to measure. Same way, I would like to say, I already pointed out, space is very important for farmer, for rainfall prediction, for precision farming. It is also very important for fisherman. He can reach the fishing school. So in India, 
there is a potential fishing zone forecast pfz by incois every day so farmers sorry the fishermen know which direction and what distance and what sea level depth they should reach where more fish are present it saves them time it saves effort and their livelihood is improved so space is also as i said very important for travelers and explorer because of the gps all such things are there but there are some challenges and danger one of them is the space weaponization earlier the emphasis was demilitarization but now the militaries use space for communication they use space for the gps but the danger which has come is the anti satellite a set type of things and more are being done as more and more satellites get launched the space debris is increasing especially the bigger one there are possibility of other mishaps in space also so there are very large number of debris around the earth and also there is a debris in the geostationary orbit so earth is the first planet or which has artificially created this belt of such object and as you are already aware asats have been tested by united states of america russia and china and this year india tested and became the fourth country by utilizing a defunct satellite at 300 km low altitude means all debris should fall down much quickly than compared to the earlier test some of which is still there so space requires new paradigms space is very costly so it requires international cooperation now you are going beyond your air space and your boundary so it requires new laws new treaties and new governance models up to now most of the space money was spent by government but then government channelize it in specific direction and it always may not be the best way to use it governments are a bit slow in rapidly changing their priorities but what now space needs is human entrepreneurship and private enterprise involvement many of you who are uh, reading the newspaper would be knowing that even the government of india has identified opening of space to private players in india you would have also become aware of the elon musk and how his company has brought back the rocket used part to land and reuse how he has also delivered the first private cargo to the international space station so while all this happens new laws and policy and regulation would be required at national level so the space is as i mentioned for the entire society even if many of you do not directly become a engineer space engineer space scientist or a astronaut please know more about space please participate as a intelligent participant 
to this great enterprise of space at this stage i would like to end my lecture and uh, if uh, there are some questions it is very uh, difficult to interact with such a large thing so what i suggest is you could uh, in chat send your questions to the coordinators so coordinators can then group questions into common topics and separate answers can be mailed to you or can be put on the sarvshetra website for you to read uh, thank you very much it was a pleasure and it was a privilege to address such a large bunch of enthusiastic space enthusiasts i am sure you would be having great career and you would also perhaps help us india and humans do more in space thank you once again thank you thank doctor you, thank you vikid adwal sir thank you very much your inaugural lecture has enabled students to understand the basis of space science they have also got the gist of what they are going to experience in the next 4 days moreover i am certain you have made them all to take the responsibility of protecting our earth and mankind thank you very much sir next thank, thank you sir yes sir next we have dr y v n krishnamurthy sir served as distinguished scientist in isro and currently working as senior professor and registrar of indian institute of space science and technology tiruvannapuram he is the former director of nrsc and secretary of isro presently he is facilitating in building payloads sensors small satellite space related systems and for gignan besides teaching and research overall administration expanding the infrastructure and facilities to meet future demands of isro and industry chairman research advisory council of nccr ministry of earth science Dr Krishna Murthy has significantly contributed during the last four decades in promoting remote sensing and allied geospatial technologies in resource management and extending their use at grassroots level his contribution in developing innovative methodologies by integrating geospatial inputs into conventional methods has greatly facilitated in ultimate assimilation of such inputs in the planning and implementation of developmental programs by the concerned he has played innumerable pivotal roles in all areas he has headed and there are lots of awards conferred on him indira gandhi gold medal award excellence award from union geographical information technology lifetime achievement award from deccan geographers baskar award ISRS team excellence award ISRO performance excellent award and lot more he has about 208 technical papers and 280 technical reports to his credit dr krishna murthy has guided eight phd scholars and development of 25 indigenous software packages organized more than 500 training programs benefiting international national state and local participants yeah Sir, I invite you for felicitating this gathering. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, but I understand I had to give a presentation too. You want the felicitation now and close this session, uh, uh, yeah. Sir Jumon, and then we start again. Yeah, sir. Uh, what you can do is you can say a few words and you can start yeah, okay, your talk. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. First of all, I would like to uh, thank the. Uh, 
IAST, my colleague Saji Mohan and Dr. Kurvila Joseph, and also from uh, Sargak Chetra, uh, Dr. Pro Father Alex and Father Sebastian, good to give us this opportunity. And this time, uh, because of the pandemic, we are not just in the premises of uh, your institute and your people, but also entire country is covered today with people following it up. That is one advantage of uh, going online and then having this webinar session. And there's an important talks because I see in the chat, some of the colleagues are looking for fundamental physics. They would like to learn. And I was just uh, browsing through the, uh, some of the chats which are going on, on certain applications. So you'll find uh, the teachers who have been, uh, or the professors who have been selected by my colleague, uh, uh, Professor Kurvilla, are actually are very interesting teachers. They make the lectures very interesting. And you heard now the director of IES to, to give a flair of what space and how, uh, how, what are the uses of it and how daily we are using many things without our, uh, uh, without our knowledge. And today that has become part and parcel of our life. And um, more importantly, we all have to look in. Uh, the government has from this pandemic and then we have so many other things happening and the geopolitical situations are changing. Then we have to have our own indigenous technologies everywhere. Uh, and also the government has launched At Atma Nirbharta. So, and then that is startup and stand up was there previously that you have to be your own entrepreneurship. You're all from 10 to 12 standard students and space is a, has a lot of opportunities, not just making satellites, launch vehicles, etc. But then it also has indigenous sensors, which you can make and what you qualify for space are very useful for common use in our day-to-day -day life because for space, you need a higher qualification. So, but then for daily use, you don't need that kind of a precision in terms of the quality uh, in the life. But, uh, but then at the low cost, we can have such devices. And that is one of the greatest opportunities which you have. So across the country, young boys and girls, this is an opportunity for you. Maybe I'll be speaking to you after this session is over, but I'll focus more on the applications which the government investments are going on. So now you, you, we all think that there are quite a interesting things happening. Space is very exciting, but also you should understand how much money we have within and because we are at still a developing country. We have still one third of the population doesn't have properly a three meals a day. So as a, as a citizen of this country, you all have a responsibility how to take care of such while we are developing. That's the most important part. If they are not taken care or what are the, what are the priorities given when the pan pandemic has come? Why we have given more importance to the migratory population? Why the pre preference has been given to the farmers? And Prime Minister in his address also, he only told thanks and namaste to two people. One is the farmers and the taxpayers. These are two important things. So unless you have a finance, you don't have money, or economy, good economy, you cannot really greatly explore into space because space is an expensive business. And you don't have that kind of a numbers where you can make a commercial uh, applications. So what we all have to focus is on where you can make your uh, fascination for science or your ideas for exploration of science. What is your contribution which you can give back to the society? in which you don't have to be free. It, it, it gives you an investment back to you. So you, you take some returns, but also enjoy this subject. So there's a wide variety of uh, diversity of things are available as far as uh, space is concerned. And you will hear uh, all right from exploration and I'll deal more about the applications, the government requirements and what is happening in the country with few examples. And once again, I thank uh, Dr. Kurvila and uh, Dr. Sajimon, and then especially from uh, Sargat Chetra, the pattern and the director taking keen interest, and uh, um, Marsena, CB nicely conducting this program. Uh, Marina, okay, sorry, Marina conducting this program. Great. Wish all the best to all of you, and I hope this will uh, give you a new insight uh, in the future days to come. All the best. Thank you very much, sir. Students, you will be able to meet YV and Krishnamurti, sir, again. This was just a short felicitation from him. In the uh, coming upcoming days, you can meet him more of him. Thank you very much, sir.
Now we have Dr. Shaijimon CS, Assistant Professor of IIST, and he is also a team member of Sargashetra. In fact, Sir has organized this beautiful pl platform for you all students through Sargashetra. So let me take this opportunity to thank you, Sir, as well as I'm asking, requesting you to propose a vote of thanks for this inaugural ceremony. Sir, please. Thank you, uh, Marina. Uh, respected uh, Director IAST, uh, Professor VK Vedwal, sir. Respected uh, our Registrar, Professor Vivian Krishnamurthy. Uh, dear uh, Dean Academics, Professor uh, Purula Joseph. Father Alex Parikalam, CMI Director, Sargachetra. Uh, Father Sebastian, a teacher, a CMI patron, uh, Sargachetra. My dear colleagues, uh, my dear and my dear students from all over the country, and I was told that uh, from other other countries as well. It's a it's indeed a proud and overwhelming time that we had right now because you know the kind of response that we got from all over the country regarding this program. And this is ninth edition of IAST schools program organizing by IAST, uh, second edition along with the Sargashetra. And the primary aim of the program is to instill the scientific temper and scientific attitude among the school children by presenting them before the different areas of space, science, and technology. Through space, science, and technology applications and research and the, the different areas of space, science, and technology, we wanted IAST always wanted from its inception onwards to create more uh, scientific spirit among the children, among the school students of the country. So in, in that direction, we have, we have very much succeeded in the, in the different versions that we organize. Usually as director rightly pointed out, we invite the school children to IAST or some other common place. And we have this in-house uh, three-day program. Uh, with the different subjects. This time also, we are getting almost students from almost all the states of the country. And then, you know, this is as Registrar rightly pointed out, this is an opportunity that, you know, more people can uh, join this program because when we organize it in in-house, uh, only limited number of students can join the program. So I'm, I am very, very thankful uh, to, to, first of all, I'm very thankful to our beloved director because right away when our dean discussed about this program, he always in the forefront of organizing such programs for the community as well as society and for students, particularly for school students. Uh, and I, I thank him profusely for, for making this, uh, this program wonderful and especially thank his wonderful inaugural lecture also. Uh, thank you, sir. Next, I, I would like to thank our beloved registrar, Oivian Krishnamurthy, sir, always after he joined in IAST, he is in the forefront of organizing such kind of programs, uh, motivating the students. And you can listen uh, the next after me that you know he is going to give a, a lecture on the applications of space science and technology. Thank you, sir, for being there for all the support that you extended for organizing this program as registrar as well as the faculty member of IAST. And uh, now I let me thank Father Sebastian Atijara, CMA patron Sargachetra. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he, uh, he, uh, he, he has given, he has delivered a wonderful lecture uh, related to the objectives of the program and in during this pandemic, what kind of like attitude that we should have. Thank you, Father, for such a wonderful uh, speech. And I, I must thank uh, Professor Gurula Joseph, the Dean Student Activities of IAST, his, his friend, colleague, Professor Everything, and he is in the forefront of organizing such an important, such a wonderful uh, program. So he is always instilling confidence. And uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity as coordinator for this program. Also, thank you, sir, for that wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful speech. Also, next I I must thank uh, Father Alex Parikalam, CMA director, who is actually is so wonderful. And every time actually he is calling me and then I'm calling him and then he's so open and whatever problems that we say about organizing this program, he has instantaneous solution then and there itself. And then he just like have 
all kinds of positive attitude and all i'm i'm sure that you all the students can actually see that how professionally they are going to organize this program for the next five days with us and i thank him thank him for that wonderful uh, support provided i thank all these coordinators including the anchor uh, marina and all the people that to associating with this program uh, i thank from the on behalf of iast i thank you all for this program thank you very much have a nice and i expect that uh, you will all have a very wonderful nice informative program for the next five, five days only one request i have is actually please seriously attend the program and listen carefully you're going to listen the wonderful star words in this area like you will not get such an opportunity from any other place i'm very very sure that every time we get the feedback when we organize such an opportunity when we give such an opportunity for the students please uh, listen carefully and then study well lot of informations are going to come thank you all thank you very much thank you very much sir students with this we have come to an end of just the inaugural ceremony soon we will be following by a special lecture by our registrar iist at 3 pm maybe a small 2 minutes break you can take if you feel you need a break but at 3 pm sharp sir will start his special lecture and at 4 15 pm you will have a theme lecture by the dean students activities uh, so just we all are waiting to hear you all sir thank you very much for this wonderful session to all of you you can take a 2 minutes break and we'll be joining exactly sharp at 3 pm
Hello. I think uh, uh, we can start. Marina, you are there. Marina. Hello. Marina, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Yeah. Students, I, I'm certain you all are ready. We are here with Dr. Vivian Krishnamurti, sir. Sir is ready with a special lecture for students. As I had introduced before, he is the registrar or of IIST. Sir, we all are waiting to listen to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Marina. And uh, allow me to share the screen. So I'll yes. get into a few slides, uh, which Thank will be you, sir. interesting. Yes, sir. Yes, and my sir. slides I'll forward as a PDF to you, which can be shared with the participants because they can go through and have certain questions or uh, what is that they can explore. That they can also look forward in the future. Students okay. were asking some doubts. Probably these slides will help them. Thank you, sir. We Marina, Marina uh, uh, allow Professor uh, Vaivyan Krishnamurthy, sir, to share the slide. Yes. Slides, yeah, please. Look. Achha. Yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah. Uh, if we can, if we can put it on the full screen, sir. Uh, if we can show you the full screen. Yeah. Yeah. Good, sir. Very good. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, thanks to uh, outstanding professor Kurvilla and uh, Saijimon and. Uh, Father Sebastian and Father Alex, and also dear students who have joined from uh, different parts of the country and maybe outside the country too. And I selected this topic on geospatial technologies because space also, space and space inputs uh, becomes part of uh, geospatial technologies. And then uh, what is for the national development? Because the first question anyone asks us is on what is it for the national development, any technology? It can be exploration, but then before exploration, how it is useful for the common people. I was also mentioning a few minutes back, how we need to uh, understand the requirements of uh, the people who doesn't have work, people who doesn't have home, people who doesn't have the minimum requirements of shelter, how things can happen and whether space can provide such with the various ministries. For example, you can uh, look into various satellites which are uh, mentioned here, there are uh, for all thematic satellites called land and water, high resolution satellites, and not all satellites are imaging satellites. There are certain sounders, there are scatterometers and uh, radiometers. So there are a lot of non-imaging satellites also, which give you the information. And these are a set of names which has been given. So I'm not reading out the names. This is to give you a gist of type of satellites which are there. One, what is uh, HRSAT is high resolution, hyperspectral remote sensing and high resolution satellites. GISAT is a satellite for imaging from a geostationary orbit. That means from 36,000 kilometers, it's going to image. Whereas all other remote sensing satellites normally are in the low Earth orbiting. So they are something from 400 to 800 kilometers from the Earth. They image and uh, give us different resolutions. And based on what is the resolutions and how it looks like, we will get into the next slides and then see. And now we also have uh, communication satellites because these are also very important. Today, we don't talk about Earth observation satellites independently. We need these communication satellites too and also the navigation satellites, constellation, 
which uh, Dr. Dadwal has mentioned. We have a constellation called NAVIC. With seven satellites, we are able to get to our country and also 1,500 kilometers from our uh, boundary. We can transmit the signals and get the navigation information. So these are for societal applications like tele-education, telemedicine, and also our uh, direct bank transfers. Suppose if you look at Arunachal Pradesh, it is, you have villages today called five day by foot, three day by foot. That means you, have, you can see the village, but to walk and go there, it takes a time. So for that, the communication links are all through satellite based and also the direct bank transfer for the individuals who are below port line or for who are doing work in, uh, for, the, for the work which is being given under rural employment guarantee scheme and uh, such things. And also mob mobile satellite services, telephony carrier, multimedia delivery, and VSAT services. So there is so much, including our stock exchange. Everything is dependent upon the satellite, communication satellites. So we have a series of satellites called INSAT and GSAT satellites for such applications. You also have to know, it is not that there are wonders done by the uh, people who are developed countries. India is the first country in 1995 to launch a satellite called IRS-1C. This has what is called three-tier imaging because you should understand the, the country or India is very huge and we need to cover the entire uh, country's resources and not in detail at every time. So here you can see there are three cameras operating from the same satellites, same satellite called uh, the time it was IRS-1C and after that we had 1D, now we have graduated, we have ResourceSat, now we have ResourceSat 2 series. So these two series has a wide field sensor. It covers a large area. You can see 740 kilometers. What does it mean? I'll show you an image. And another one called on 141 kilometers. And another one uh, covers a smaller area in greater detail. That's around 70 kilometers, which is other detail. So this is the first time India in 1995 gave to the world the high resolution satellite data. That time only a French satellite data with 10 centimeters is available for civilian use. For defense use, people may be having very high resolution. But India is the first country in 1995 to give 5.6 meter resolution for the entire globe. So the people across the globe could access this data and have for their varied applications. And you can see here, when I talk about AWIPS, it covers such a large area, almost like 800 by 800 kilometers. So that means entire one state can be covered in one shot. And this you can get every fifth day data. And here it is 141 by, kilo, by 141 kilometers, a smaller shot, which can look at a few districts. But then here, a smaller one, 70 by 70 kilometers, we look at a particular block. So these are all like administrative units in any area because we are a federal government and we have a states and states control the land and all the applications has to be handled by the, by the states. But there are certain national applications which is looked at. Now, the other resolutions part, what uh, Dr. Dadwal has mentioned, there is one spatial resolution. Just to get a view for you, for example, you can see on the top left corner, this is at a, a particular resolution in 56 meter resolution. This is in 23 meter resolution. But you cannot find any difference between these two, except this is a little blurred. But or else all the black dots, the lines, the redness, the redness is the vegetation here. These are the water bodies. These are the roads. Everything is clear here. That means if we sharpen this image using digital filters, we can get the same achievement. So that is where the future satellites, when I talk about GISAT, a geostationary satellite, imaging from a geostationary orbit is going to give an image of this nature, but you can get the details at the 23 meter resolution. So always never get caught in these resolutions. Okay, there's the satellites because of there's another resolution called radiometry, which gives you better than what it is. That means the satellite detect much more than what we can recognize. So whatever the satellites are detected, how to bring into a recognized form. So there's a lot of image processing techniques in which there's ample opportunities for youngsters like you. This is what I was telling you at 23 meter resolution, you get little more details of the same terrain, but for a smaller area. That means if you are continually looking at a finer information, at times if you don't have finer information because of clouds like this, even with a coarser information, we can do processing 
to look at the final and conclude because when certain application which i tell you which needs a continuous data for such areas then also we had a satellite called cotosat 1 this is a stereo imaging satellite that means it can develop the 3d views to give an example if someone is from karnataka or from bangalore there's a query when you are going towards the airport so you can see the difference between the digital elevation model from 2006 to 2009 but how much volume has been excavated from that it gives you the information here and this is from 2006 to 2015 that means how much tons that means how much trucks have moved whether that much of royalty has been paid for whoever has taken it on lease everything can be quantified and they, we can look back into such scenarios this is from the same satellite you can see the building heights and the heights which are given here and also this is the world trade center bangalore uh, how the buildings have come what are the building heights of it everything measured from a satellite with 2.5 meters resolution please understand this so it is not the resolution which matters it is the application which matters and there are very important image processing techniques we can bring in much greater differences and in the heights which is for our day to day applications this is where our cotosat series of satellites this is 50 cm resolution please see in this stadium you have certain steel ropes which ties here but not only the steel but also the shadow you can see that is the greatness of that means you have a steel wire which holds a base which shadow you can see here even the other part also is visible these are made in india these are already indigenous satellites and also you can see the tennis court the lines the line may not be width may not be 50 cm but you are able to detect that that means the satellites of a particular resolution detect much more than the resolving power what it has because of radiometric resolution which is very good from our satellites that is where and then you, with image processing you can make wonderful outputs whatever is needed here you can see a bridge being constructed and something is on the way you can see the cranes and the shadow of the cranes so what is the height of this crane arm you can measure this is the shadow of it and the small agriculture practices because in india we have small small land holdings and each of the land holdings different crops will be there some are organized structure somewhere the bunds are not properly organized so so many things will happen and there is a bund of a tank and you can see the water body which is not full here and sudden people are taking some sand or a mud or quarrying temporarily in those areas then you can see this is part of egypt because all our satellites are global satellites that means they cover entire globe see here the cortosat series of satellites we had so up to f and then you can see the pivotal and also the crop which is growing that means our satellites not only look at what is happening in our country but across the country that means you learn a new technique here you can become a global figure you can do elsewhere also go elsewhere use our satellite data to do the applications which i am going to show you so this is where and then now the puddling has been done or where the crop and crop status where is a greenness is good where the greenness is not good so how to do certain measures here is what we can look for and this is also again from the same satellite dubai and environments because you can see very high rise buildings and how the the different boats everything has been put and we can go go into more greater detail to give a bigger view have compressed this and then kept this image for you and this is our cortosat series of satellites also have what is called a evm that means when the satellite is moving the camera is looking back at the same location that means the earth is moving east west the satellite is coming down from north to south but then that is called descending orbit but then the camera is looking at the same at the back so you are getting a, a lapse in that lapse we are able to get a parallax and you can get digital elevation models so this is part of raipur city the buildings and the river all has been generated through such cameras so this is called very specific camera that means you can get a video stream you get a continuous that means is a long building is there you can get the two sides of the building and you can make generate uh, such uh, building heights or uh, the what is the depth of the pond that means the profile of it or this river what is the profile is the river each color tells the height variations which are coming in then also you can see these are used for these are basically lidar based means you can also use lidars laser based that is laser based to get finer depths such depths has been done across the coast of india 
so that if a tsunami comes or else then uh, storm surges come what will be the area which will be inundated that becomes very clear out of it and you can also make topographical maps 3d views etc and then this is what it shows of how the flood this is in part of tamil nadu if there is a 1 meter how much area will be covered with water and 2 meters how much it will be there 3 meter how much it will be there and 4 meter how much it will be there i hope you are able to see the simulation which i try to show you so this is where we need to plan if so and so how many number of people has to be evacuated for certain purposes so we can also make terrestrial building heights you can make with your own uh, uh, handheld this is based on lidar what are you seeing applications here of these buildings which are there there is a forest research institute in dehradun which is a very symmetrical and perfectly planned building but you don't have to do that you can do it with your mobile phone too low cost alternative that means whatever the mechanism which you have in your hand kindly see this this is done with a mobile if you have two overlapping photographs of a given area with 60% you can generate there's a software called trivum you can go to iars in dehradun website and you can download this trivum on your uh, machine on your computer take overlapping uh, photographs and then feed it to it and tell which mobile you are use so we know what is the uh, focal length of the camera which has been used there and automatically it makes it and then you can morph what is the photograph which has you are taken in the field on the digital elevation model you can morph back side you can see the satellite data on the building block you can keep these buildings what is important here is you can also look at what is the population which is there suppose this area gets flooded how many people has to be evacuated from here which is the building what is its location and here the navigation is used so we know exactly the location of the building and to reach people for rescuing or how many people to rescue to plan in a control room that's all possible and i out of your fun if you want to make some models you can do by it yourself another most application is because the government or for yourself when you had to do something you own a land but the land has a number this is called survey number or sometimes it's called parcel number you can see these are all each parcel has a number i didn't put the numbers here because it becomes clumsy but then all this this is a government land these are small land holders and we have a number based on this number we know which farmer is a small farmer marginal farmer or a large farmer the government has schemes different schemes for the small and marginal farmers in which how much subsidy they can give 60% subsidy 80% subsidy for a given scheme which they want to implement so to identify this has given a game changer previously these cadastral maps had no coordinates but then we used a mechanism you all have if you are already completed 12 you must have read your polynomial equations so this is a second order and third order third order polynomial fit has been made for the on the cadastral maps which doesn't have coordinates but we given control points on the satellite a location of a particular tank location or a field bund which is very conspicuous such points have been given and these maps have been transformed and now each location has a geographic coordinate like latitude longitude and it has an applications varied so isro itself has done for 8 to 10 districts and some of the states like chatisgarh maharashtra have did with their own investments and other states are following under land resources modernization program land records modernization program of government of india and then the applications broadly dr dadwal has mentioned that means we do in season multiple forecast that means one month before the crop is harvested 8 to 11 crops today we give the figures of how much is the uh, produce which is going to the, come to the market and anything which is going to change in terms of market economies that is what is this is one of the major applications and most of our satellite images multi spectral are are tuned towards agricultural applications and inventory and mapping i will show you some uh, areas that means this how the canal systems are properly maintained and how they are being utilized and how much crop is being coming in each of the crops similarly the watershed management in terms of productivity why watershed management is because for a country like india we have a high rainfall and then there are areas where the land is getting degraded so we need to know any interventions done in terms of water harvesting how it is going to impact so watershed is a small unit of 5 to 10000 uh, hectares and what are the implications in terms of incoming solar radiation and the runoff which comes in 
and when you make certain uh, structures like uh, gully plugging that's all called water and soil conservation techniques how much water moisture you are able to retain so that how much agricultural practices you can enhance and government is investing here today almost like 1500 rupees per hectare please understand 1500 per hectare in the country is being invested to to conserve the soil and the water in small pockets of the lands across the country and this is where the potential fisheries zone we have a series of satellite called ocean sat this gives the ocean color based on the ocean color we know where is the diatoms and phytoplankton which is floating on top of it there is a set of fish and also we uh, use the sea surface temperature because there's a conducive environment plus the food which is available from the which we can know from the ocean color the third is wind vectors that's where i was telling you scattermeter the scattermeter gives you the wind vector so how these blooms will move with time so it is not a static thing on the oceans things are dynamic how we give this information when the search time is reduced and the fuel cost also reduced there's a survey done which shows 35000 crores per annum per year is the savings based on this forecast of potential fishing zones so now we are going to launch oceansat 3 and 3 is not one but 3 and 3a that means we have a series and each of the satellites has lifetime of more than 5 years so this is the and as i told you these are all satellites are global whatever you lo- learn in india today these kind of potential techniques are needed for across the globe so you can become an entrepreneur understand the basics physics of it how it does what how what when we go on to the sea we cannot see these diatoms and uh, this thing because of rayleigh scattering but from a satellite play somewhere on 500 kilometers above the earth is able to do it because we are able to keep certain bands in which we can recognize the hindrances why we are unable to detect such and measure accurately the water leaving radiance and that makes us possible to get this potential fishing zones forecast and this regularly is given by inquiries in hyderabad and also snow and glaciers and forestry the this is done by the forest survey of india they make an assessment of the forest cover uh, in every year every two years and there is an nr census is done by isro that is on land use soils geomorphology the land degradation snow and glaciers and vegetation this all information is available on bowen i request you all on bowen you can get all this information where you can go for your own analysis if you want to plan in future on this urban i will come back a little later the weather and climate as i mentioned to you there are quite a amount of information which has been brought out there is in nrsc there is a website on nices on bowen also you can see all these are available there are what is called essential climate variables there are some 51 essential climate variables out of that 23 are amicable through space and these are very important measurement mechanism to understand the climate change so from space whatever is there from 23 13 is already we are measuring and we are putting in the public domain these are all climate qualified data sets that's what is called and this anyway panchayat level i will come to you and this is where the hot weather see these are the predictions which has been given one of the important aspect is this comes and then predictions are given the district collectors have been informed but still youngsters are dying in some of these places where you had the sun stroke the due to sun stroke so what we did is in one of the states in telangana the the doctors were asked to give a communication through the cable operators from the satellite communication transponders that information has been transferred to the cable operators to every home it has been transmitted but by doctors giving the information about what is this weather forecast in terms of hot weather and what it implies and what precautions to be taken so in 2016 in that state of telangana there is not even a single death so this is where what we need is any application you have to take to the end then one understanding the science convert into a technology tools and making it into an application and how this application reaches to the people so everywhere there is a set of things to be done and to doing that you have an opportunity as a as a as an entrepreneurship and then here there are other ones called ease of doing business or the governance which you are telling so if you have heard in the news there is a funding which has been enhanced for rural employment guarantee scheme because under this pandemic most of the small and marginal farmers or the landless laborer will not have work 
So what is the work efficiency which, which they can do during this period? So the amount has been increased. Now it has a project of one lakh crore, one of the biggest investments government has made for livelihood security. So that's an opportunity. But here, what is the importance is, if you see this map here in India, every location, what work is being done, who is doing this work, what and what will be the result of this work, all are measured because there's a, a convergence of projects. As I told you, this water conservation and soil conservation, they converge into this area. Now we get an information. If you go into Bowen, go into this um, Geo Mandrega, and then click in your village, how much works are being done? Who is doing this work? And what are the benefits he is getting or this, the area is getting? You can get this information. So everything is transparent. Because there's a transparency, that means there's a good governance Government could take a decision in one stroke to enhance from 40,000 crores to 1 lakh crore. That means 60,000 crores. But to analyze and tell what activities are done, there's not much of infrastructure. So to analyze this, even anyone can access through their internet and do the process and provide to the government such evaluation mechanisms. Maybe some things you will hear from Taji Mohan in uh, his economics of uh, uh, the space technology. Similarly, the housing stages of construction, which is being done in different states. These watersheds, which I have mentioned, there are two apps called Srishti and Drishti, which looks at the implementation impact of the development activity. That means what an action is intended to give a result and what this result has really come out. These are the two things which comes in. These I will tell you in another one, but ease of doing business. Suppose if there's a heritage point, that means you have a fort or a palace or a very ancient thing which need to be preserved. So around that, if you need construction, permission to give it used to take a lot of time. Today it is only you downloaded that app and then click the location on your own mobile and then send it to the, uh, to for, for an NOC and then within 72 hours, you will get an NOC. Whether it is yes, if you are, want to raise the building height or you want to construct a new building and if no, why it is not being done. And this has been projected as one of the ease of doing business while our own country, how it has making the business for people to put through. This is one of the applications. On Based on that, we have many applications which has come. This is also the postal services, health, law and justice. So there are so many areas which these applications are working together. I want you to draw your attention to, to this particular image where you can see certain lines. These are the lines, okay? These are all what is called fractures. So the water is not just moving along the drainage line, but also it moves across. See this line? It is going across the divide. That means always we think the water is flowing along a river system, but that is not so. But these fractures in different rock systems, these are all crystalline rocks, it is cutting across the drainage divides. That means these fractures take a lot of fresh water even into the sea. We normally think from the estuaries, we the rivers take the fresh water into the sea, but it is not so. Besides that, we also have these fractures which drain fresh water. That's where you get shrimp deep in the ocean. These can be up to two kilometers away from the coast. These can be 100 kilometers away the coast. And then in such areas which you can put through. But you also have dikes. Sometimes when you take get a good water here, you may not get a fresh water here because these dikes make an obstruction for this. And this height of image at a coarser resolution, you can get all these small joints, everything very clearly. But when you go to very closer, very fine resolution, this gets diffused. So that's where there's always advantage. You go more closer, sometimes you miss something. So you have to look from a distance, a comprehensive view, and then come to closer to make that applications possible. So this is the fracture zone, which is there, but it is diffused here. So it is not possible for us to find out. And then this is a small tank and the moisture is moving from here to other tank and this is the dike. So if you get one side a good water, the other side you may not get the, if you drill a board, you may not get good uh, fresh water there. Water can fade. It can be a few meters from one location to another. But this can be very precisely understood. And also you should understand that if you do this, if you know the dip and depth, there's a geophysical survey called uh, for a geo electrical resistivity survey where you can understand the depth and dip. That means in which direction we know from this satellite image, but then you also can know in what angle it is. 
so at what depth it is going to open into the ocean or what is going to open suppose you want don't want the water to go away suppose you are in a small island you don't want the fresh water to go away you want to stock that water than the fresh water suppose if you have andaman nicobar islands they are small islands you need to make a water source if the rain comes you can fill in some water but so you can do some clay grouting so these are all highly weathered zones in this weathered zone you can do some clay grouting so the water at the back end will be always available to you as a fresh water as a reservoir underneath and this is what i was telling you about the irrigation potential so you can see on different dates how the irrigation has potential has been estimated so this is still a supply based irrigation system there is a demand based irrigation system from the satellites because as i told you every fifth day every day also you are going to get the information so we can know for each crop what is the crop water requirement so exactly that requirement for that crop if you are able to give water you can expand the area under irrigation so the government also has given certain schemes that means if you want to enhance the area under irrigation beyond this area also how we can give certain schemes using certain pumping mechanism using uh, non conventional energy and such schemes are also available based on these studies so this is one in telangana jorala project and uh, uh, you can monitor these from the satellites and these are all available in the specific state government websites and this is on the power of the 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 panchayat raj because kerala also we have a lot of panchayat raj system is very strong so we made a space based information suppose for decentralized planning that means the scale of 10000 we mapped all the themes on land use land cover and also on the information the soils etc like that and the land degradation at 50000 scale and attached to it to make the plans but how do and then there are certain 281 assets in each village is supposed to be there or in a panchayat if there is not there we allowed people to uh, students especially help in finding out how many assets are there and their assets are not there how we can make it uh, plans for making those assets and to train the panchayat level workers as satcom satellite communication facility at every block some of the states have taken it they see online this information and what is that gaps which they have how to plan but this is not possible for them to plan by themselves here this is where another another data analysis opportunity available for youngsters like you once you become uh, uh, your own in any discipline irrespective of either engineering or uh, commerce or any other economics you can do so many activities of this nature and similarly like urban areas urban areas has what is called local bodies so for these local bodies to plan previously we did a national urban information system today there is an amrut you also heard there is amrut cities some 500 amrut cities so they have been trained by the local bodies will do this planning process that means whatever the maps generated from the satellite data are available for these urban local bodies who are authorized to prepare their own plans and they put it in the public domain and public can give comments on the town specific uh, on their views and then there are also site suitability environmental conditions also have been looked into while making this plan so there is a good opportunity for people to plan for themselves this is what the 73rd and 74th amendment of our constitutions very important constitutions so that what tells the local bodies and panchayats can plan by themselves should plan by themselves and the finances are directly given to the panchayats and the local bodies there's no state and barricades here so that is how the <coughs> the information flow is needed for them to train and use so there may not be a full potential to use that's where youngsters like you can future you can be town planners you can be or a panchayat level rural development planners you can do many of these schemes this is where i would like to show you the government that time is uh, this is in 2015 <clears throat> they launched a program called uh, greening uh, eastern india why eastern india is many a time we find after the kharif season because you all know we have kharif that is in the monsoon season crop and rabi basically on the irrigation that is the winter crop so there are a lot of post kharif fallows are there rice fallows what it is called that rice fallow has a moisture and that moisture can grow pulses and for that whether the pulses it is possible or not the entire eastern in india so this is only a 3 days job all data what is published on bhavan same data has been used and 3 days within 3 days this information could be provided for the state governments to understand where is the potential areas available for 
making that. So 8 lakh hectares has been identified as a potential suitable site. Though this is available, but access to resources is not there. So the green whatever dots you see, and you, this is a, you can blow it into village. As I showed you at a cadastral level, the information is available for this particular state, Chhattisgarh. So they can go through and what is the yield and gross income, everything can be put through. But this is not a one-time affair. This has to be done every year. Who is going to do this job? Neither the agriculture specialists are available to do. As a consultants, people like you, youngsters, can use different data analytic techniques to do that application. So there's a very big, good opportunity as a business opportunity. Not only in India, you learn, but you can go anywhere in the world and do it for yourself. Similarly, for, because we are an agrarian society, but agriculture fails because of the mon monsoon fails. So the second livelihood option, which has been given is horticulture, that's permanent tree crops. Suppose if you have a permanent tree crops, even the rainfall is not good, but still the farmer doesn't go the, below the pot line, taking that as a second livelihood option. But after seeing these outputs, the prime minister has announced that we should have these inland fisheries as one of the part of blue revolution. Blue revolution has some part in the inland, some on the ocean. Ocean is for cage fishing, etc. But on the land, we have what is called inland fishing. Kindly see, this is a part of Chhattisgarh, one state itself in one district. District is only 10,000 square kilometers of area. If you take half hectare to 10 hectares, almost more than 5,000 tons of fish will come out of the land. But that should be an organized structure. That means you cannot expect the full growth to happen. That means you have to make a fingerlings. The fingerlings has to be taken into the ponds. That means like it's an industry for fingerlings. It is for the fish. Within three months, you have to harvest and harvested one has to go to the market. So you have to have processing units. So it is not just fish alone, but ancillary industries which are needed to do this activity. So much of employment opportunities are available within the India, fully still not export and government is giving a lot of funding for such uh, aspects in our country. So this is called part of the blue revolution. So this is where the government investments are there. This is where any of you have interest on fisheries or biology, geology, and also want to link with some kind of a, a information processing and you have ample opportunities. The most important is the crop insurance. Why crop insurance is? Because we know our uh, agriculture system can fail because of many calamities. It can be because of the failure of monsoon or non availability of water or there's certain amount of risks. The farmer takes a lot of risks in his agriculture practices. So government has made uh, compulsory for uh, insurance. So there are eight areas you can use space technology. That means this is for premium. For any insurance, there's a premium. Because some of you have bikes, etc. that, you know you have to pay an insurance premium. Similarly for this. So how many people are covered in the insurance? What is the crop growing risk within the one month? Discrepancies also. And finally, the yield and verification. So all these areas, there is a possibility. Today, it takes almost like three to four months to pay back. But then you should opt for within seven days, you are able to solve and uh, give the insurance claim for the per people who are affected. That is the best system. So there are eight companies in the country. Two are public sector and six are private. All are looking for this data analytics. And data analytics is the one of the important area and of economy and also for professionals like you who are going to be professionals in future, this is one of the major area of opportunity. And this is about using a mobile itself, mounted on a vehicle, on a car, and put through, you can mark what are the areas which are, because your mobile is so sensitive, it has a gyro uh, instrument, it could map exactly the damaged roads and uh, moderately damaged to government to take a decision how to do, where, and things like that. You're also hearing about the locus, right? So this has been done in Kazakhstan in uh, 10 years back. We did this for Kazakhstan to show which are the potential areas where the breeding grounds happen. Why this is important is, for example, see this insect. This is, it is going to five to seven centimeters. It is putting its tail. It is sensing what? Soil texture, soil temperature, moisture, hardness, salinity, and also outside it looks for the bushes and other covers. This is where it lays its eggs. So this fellow is very intelligent. So to make this a similar instrument by yourself using your payload, whatever is it, is very much important. Can you do that? Today we do it from satellite-based information. 
on where is the soil moisture or where is the vegetation and soil texture is all done by by satellites but then there's a mechanism which is needed an insect a small insect which is able to do and here you have an opportunity that means there's a life cycle for it breeding flight suitability direction and egg development and hopper stage these are the areas if you are able to eradicate the swarm will not come so instead of looking at the swarm where the swarm going using drones to monitor that if you are able to identify this you get a lead time at least of 50 days in which you can eradicate at the where it is what a, where is the site where it's for laying the eggs and making the hopper stage so we can know the problem at the problem stage itself we can do there's a bulletin which is coming from uh, nrsc a regional center at jodhpur is now continuously bringing the bulletins on this this is what similar to you have a produce which is coming from one location but how this produce will go they move to different places this we did for ifco you must have heard a company called ifco which is a fertilizer distributor company so where it makes a fertilizer that fertilizer from how it will come to the warehouse and from warehouses how it is going to the stores how many stores of their own the leased ones and to make it more economical we have to see an inventory of it and capacity and sales sales position so you're not talking about just space space gives you the information regarding what crops are suitable in a given area and also the information on the weather which tells you how the crop growing period cgp is crop growing period how the crop growing period is shifting and accordingly what type of fertilizer is needed for which crop this becomes the crux of the problem today government also has launched a program called crop health cards health cards that is soil health cards that talks about the micronutrient deficiencies these micronutrient deficiencies you can make a micronutrient blend but this micronutrient blend for sugarcane it is different for uh, banana it is different for paddy it is different so there is a ample demand for all such allocations but then you have what is called allocation and optimum routing this is resource allocation so this is what the flipkart amazon and if you see many of the people who have certain experience uh, a graduate an experience in gis and with uh, programming skill on python they are hired at a much higher level than what you can expect so there are so many opportunities of this nature not just for fertilizers but any resource to move to the user sand and today in the pandemic like this all are waiting for online everything has converted into online procurements so everyone has to do similar side of things so this is all done through a gis and gis modeling and this is for online nuclear emergency suppose there is a radiation leak this has been done for uh, in uh, kalpakam nuclear plant so if a radiation leak comes these blue lines are all the village boundaries and this is the plume which is moving and then this is in the ocean this is the bay of bengal so how it moves and comes to the land so based on that we can look up what is the ground deposition dose and what are the precautionary measures who to do so this is a real time system for 72 hours before it takes the inputs on wind vectors uh, and from their own stations and give this prediction models so this simulation can be on your handheld device like your mobile so and then make your production mechanism so this is where the things are and this is all done through indigenous software there is no commercial software see. so there is also a called precision agriculture so this is for in terms of water pesticides and fertilizer use and variable rate at which we have to use these things because for this as i told you our land holding sizes are very small they are varying so how to optimize these resources so the less usage and more yield then your uh, profits will be much higher and everyone every farmer is looking for uh, such uh, inputs as an advice base and there are a lot of business in fact the crop uh, insurance a small segment is being done by satsure a startup company uh, which has been and they are alumni of iast and this is where but you are not looking for such you want to become smart even want to have a smartphone smart cities smart villages smart health care and smart agriculture like that so this is where the wisdom plus technology including innovation so there are a lot of opportunities for you to do but then when you want to do on smart you get huge amount of data and the data is having a variety and there are not structured data there are semi structured unstructured data but this variety of data and volume you have to process to give information on near real time real time that means you're walking you should get a result is it going to rain if it is going to rain what i am supposed to do i am going to harvest 
where i'm going to keep the harvest uh, produce and what else we can do this is the opportunity i'm telling you this is a very very big business making satellites is not a big business okay the amount spent for max satellites or launch vehicle is not big as i told you a 1 lakh crore application is running with a geospatial application one percent of it if you are taking of 1 lakh crore what is your returns please understand any application you are trying to show the government that the good governance is on what are the processing this is where we could get funds from i am not telling this is a theoretical situation we could get 5 rupees per hectare from maharashtra government to implement a scheme and which will give a returns for them per hectare 3600 rupees to 900 rupees variable that means if he is having a, a bore well it is 900 he is using irrigation water so what is the crop water requirement and how much water he is using a water cess has to be paid and that is the application and today because of the three tier imaging what was done 5 rupees per hectare is only costing now 50 paisa as far as the data and processing is concerned that means you invest 50 paisa you make a profit on top of it each of the state governments are looking for the water use and how to put water cess they are collecting water cess in different places similarly in another state it is 10000 rupees broken into 5000 rupees per year so a project of 20 crores has been done in chatisgarh to get all the cadastrals and other things so the, the, every state he is looking for such information which they would like to use it for the benefit so whatever we looked at he is where is and what mapping this is descriptive but in future it is why and so what that is modeling that means we are looking for prognostics early warning or a, a predictive analysis this is what we are looking in terms of food and water security infrastructure planning environment energy security for all this a variety of data is available in india no other country in the from a governmental system where you have such huge data for most of the electromagnetic spectrum which is imaged both from radars or from uh, multi spectral that what we call as optical imaging everything is available only it is for you to make certain sensors in the field and then how do we conduct these in situ sensors there's a lot of scope for you to do some of you are interested in physics in fact one of my colleagues speak about umesh and all they'll tell you how they are making some indigenous sensors okay that and that how what is the value of it in terms of commercially they will help you this is what isro's vision as far as vikram sarabhai he looked always for the problems of the people and the society and for us in the up to 2030 this is what the time would be talk about food security water energy i didn't touch because of lack of time but energy non conventional energy solar hydel power wind all there are applications in there similarly for health shelter uh, even the malaria infested areas so many things are being done and infrastructure and information this is where on bhavan we are giving all the information from the satellite which is coming in then the governance whatever you plan with the right inputs if you plan and you know what its impact so monitor and evaluate it and the decision support for such and disaster risk we are doing early warning and response and rehabilitation but preparedness is also very important these are the two important areas where you have ample opportunities which you should which you can look for and also in sustainable development that means any act which we do either in agriculture urban coastal ecosystems fragile ecosystems all has an impact and also climate change induced impact this is where the independent bodies we would like to do especially academic institutions are encouraged to take up such studies where the data will be made available from isro for such activities and these are the future isro has a long line of satellites it is not just a few satellites which has been launched here you can see in the bottom there are cartosat series 3 which is 25 cm one of the best in the world is available with india and with all indigenously done optics to everything and also the resource sat series 3 series gi sat high resolution that is every day you get in information on high resolution this microwave ocean sat this in nisr is an joint collaboration with nasa we are making a satellite for uh, in uh, microwave imaging l and s band that means it penetrates under the surface of the from the surface of the earth and gives you a lot of information so it's nasa and isro's collaboration in 2021 the satellite is going to fly and huge information is available so for youngsters like you all where god has given you one country with diversity of uh, ecosystems you have eastern ghats western ghats east coast west coast 
and the continental shelves are also different we have islands we have cold deserts we have a sandy deserts and we have the northeastern hills because that's a, a relief length ratio for the river systems are small and here you have bigger river system so god has packed everything many languages so much of diversity has given for you to experiment anything you experiment in highly heterogeneous environment you go and do it on a homogeneous environment where most europe and uh, uh, western countries and all are there it is easy to do any modeling i need not to tell you that's a common sense uh, part of it so you have a great opportunity being an indian to do these all these analysis and the opportunities which are available and uh, i thank you for your uh, kind patience here i know the afternoon session because it's after lunch it's not that easy to put through so that's where i told i will show you a flare of applications which are there few of them i try to explain and tell you but then most of these things you study in 10th 11th and 12th the fundamentals you already read through okay these are only the applications of it how an image can be broken how an image is uh, how you can break into not the spatial but also in the frequency domains how you can do the corrections and how do you process this huge by uh, terabyte this is petabytes of data in nrc now we have petabytes of data and all is for data analytics because the next century economics of the world is on data analytics so most of you who have a fascination for physics or for chemistry or for biology or botany or for economics and commerce ultimately look at what of understanding enjoying a subject what application you can do so it is good for the society and it gives you a livelihood and you can become an entrepreneur by yourself so you are no longer a job seeker but a job creator whatever applications i shown you everywhere you can become an entrepreneur so this is where my catch is for you is and also your national education policy has talked about interdisciplinary research interdisciplinary education so that is the greatest opportunity for all of you kids who are all getting into their professional courses so choose carefully so that it is not that you have to do an engineering discipline you have to do a medical discipline you can also turn into your arts your culture your music whichever you want you can take which will give you added credits for it but unless you have multidisciplinary research it doesn't become a product or else it becomes a good publication so if your multidisciplines are there you know uh, of an indigenous product and how to sell this product what are the legal implications when you tell about a product if you are doing in india or you are doing across the globe so all these you can learn when you are doing your profession courses once again thank you for the opportunity given by the team for me to interface and then maybe we'll have more uh, interactions in future yeah. thank you thank you thank sir you, for professor. the wonderful uh, lecture thank you professor krishnamurthy sir it was a enriching and motivating session on behalf of iest and sakshita academy and chatmus center chandrasey and entire participants of iest at school program 2020 beyond the horizon we would like to extend a sincere thanks to professor krishnamurthy sir for your inspiring motivating and enriching session thank you so much for thank you and next we have a theme lecture by dr kurubala joseph he serves as a dean student activities and student welfare outreach of iest i'm sure you will get more practical knowledge and a practical inspiring session on uh, by him on behalf of iest and sabarshetra academy and all the participants of beyond horizon we welcome you sir for this session and uh, all to yourself yeah thank you so much uh, uh for the nice words in fact uh i would like to talk on fascination of science since our uh, director and uh, registrar vivian krishnamurthy sir both of them uh explored the space in very detail so what i am planning is i will go through this some of the scientific uh, uh, inventions which changed the life uh, so some of the life changing achievements then i will talk on the uh, nano materials nanotechnology and finally how this nano technology or nano materials can be 
used for the development of the new world. This is the content of my talk. Uh, prior to that, uh, uh, let me introduce our institute, IAST. Uh, you know, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology uh, under Department of Space, Government of India, established in 2007. This is our emblem, the logo. You can see a rocket uh, launching, and this is a trajectory, and you can see a satellite, and this is the orbit, and where you can see the Earth also. This, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, one of our students, we, we made a competition, and one of the students is a, um, designed this logo. And uh, ours is a deemed to be university. As I told you, it's under Department of Space, Government of India. And uh, presently, we are offering undergraduate, postgraduate, doctoral, and postdoctoral yeah. programs yeah. in the areas of space science and space technology and applications. And um, our director and registrar uh, have given a very good um, uh, talk about space science technology, the basis and applications. And uh, actually, in in our institute, we are uh, taking we are having three. Uh, undergraduate program, BTEC in aerospace and uh, BTEC in avionics communication engineering. And um, we have a dual degree program that is BTEC plus MS or MTEC in various space science and technology. And uh, we are taking uh, students through IATJ advanced. And uh, one good thing about our institute is uh, if you got admission in IAST and if you can keep a CGP of 7.5, in every semester, the expenses will be met by government of India. There is a assistantship. So one should keep a, a semester CGP of 7.5 each semester. So if first semester, if you keep 7.5, you will get that uh, money reimbursed and their expenses, including the hostel, food, tuition fee, and everything. And on successful completion of the course, depends on the vacancies in ISRO's center, there's a chance to get upsold in ISRO's. That is another uh, uh, interesting thing. So if you, are, uh, if you are keeping very good academic performance, you don't need to pay uh, money for the studies, including your food accommodation and things. And on successful completion of the course in four years with a 7.5 CGP and above, depends on the vacancies in ISRO's centers there's a chance to get upsold in ISRO uh, scientists, engineers. In addition, we are offering various uh, master's program, MTech and MS programs in various disciplines, in aerospace engineering, in aeros avionics, chemistry, earth and space science, mathematics, physics, et cetera. And uh, the admission um, to this MTech program is usually through a uh, gate. And if number of can candidates are more written test plus uh, interview and the phd admission we are having a research program in, in almost all areas of space and technology and research is again based on the gate csr ugc jrf just etc sometimes we depends on the number of candidates sometimes we used to conduct return thrust and interview also and uh, some of the positive takeaways of IST. It, it is the only institute in the country, probably in Asia, offering undergraduate, PG, and doctoral, and even postdoctoral program in space, science, and space technology. So it's the only institute in the country. And we have a national character of students with the UG students coming from 22. Sometimes we got 24 states representation. And we have a very good teacher-student ratio. It is one, one is to seven. And we have a strong, because it's a Department of Space Institute, we have very strong linkage of physics. So students can uh, undergo a project, take their uh, project internship uh, in ISRO centers. And uh, our own students uh, designed and developed and launched a sounding rocket with the help and guidance of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center scientist in 2012. And currently, a couple of nano satellites are. Uh, developing in the institute and uh, students are getting uh, very good exposure to various space science and technological applications with the 
we have a, a, a space where uh, is a miniature type of or nano satellites and uh, launch vehicles. So those things are uh, developing. So students will get hands-on training on all this sort of uh, uh, things. This is a master plan of IAST where uh, you can see the, this is our academic campus where you can see all the hostels. We have several hostels for uh, boys and girls. And this is our student activity center where with the uh, various indoor stadiums, open air theater and uh, big dining mess hall for the students and uh, multi-purpose hall. And uh, this is our administrative block and this is our library, beautiful place. And this is our aerospace building. This is our uh, avionics building and this is our uh, inter display block and this is our physical science block. Another campus opposite the road, we have uh, uh, the student actors, uh, students uh, football or cricket stadium and faculty quarters. Altogether, uh, nearly 100 acres land in Valiamila. We have another campus at the top of Ponmudi Hills. And uh, you can see some of the buildings of our institute. This is the library, one of the best beautiful place of IST is the library, seven storied uh, building. And good thing about this uh, library is uh, almost a student, we can, can say that it's a student controlled library. That means uh, Students can take their lab, mobile phone or laptop or textbook. There is no control. But every year we are taking the stock and 100% stock is there. And this library is connected to all the, almost all ISRO centers. So people can access uh, books or journals from other places also. And this is one of the hostels. As I told you, we have several such hostels. This is one of the boys hostel. We have a, a 24 into 7 medical assistants in the campus. And this is one of the girls' hostels. And uh, yeah, we have, a, since we have students from more than 20 states, we have a buffet system. All the meals are a buffet and students can have the choice of uh, selecting the food. And in addition, we have a private cafeteria also within the campus. We have a very good uh, water harvesting system and uh, the entire uh, water requirement for the campus is uh, uh, we are we are we are saving the water from this uh, uh, small lake. So I am from the chemistry department. Uh, we have established beautiful laboratories in almost all department. We have excellent laboratories, and uh, students are getting hands-on training on all spectral, analytical, mechanical, whatever be the, uh, the almost all sophisticated equipment. The idea is that once the students are going out from IAST after four or five years, mostly they are going to join in this row they will get adequate training in operating all the instruments and, uh, and uh, equipment. And uh, this, some of the PG laboratories, we have a good nanoscience and technology laboratory. We have a good materials characteristics laboratory and uh, we have a polymer processing laboratory and things like that. So welcome to IAST. All of you, please try to get admission in IAST so that you can get trained and come out as a good space scientist and you can work, if you're very good, the vacancies are there, you can work for ISRO and you can save, serve the nation. Thank you. So my dear students, coming to the talk, if you look back, the history of science and technology, one can say almost 60 to 70% of the inventions or discoveries happened because of these two things. One is curiosity, other one is utility. So almost 60 to 70% of the inventions happened only because of curiosity. That means from the beginning, people were really curious to know the secret of nature. They were really, really curious. They were trying to explore. The science began that the fact behind it. We have a lot of examples. We have a lot of examples. No, Sir, Sir Isaac Newton, he was really curious why the apple or the fruits are coming down, why not it's going up? And because of his curiosity, finally end up in discovering the gravity. So we have a lot of our own Raman, C.V. Raman. He was really curious why the sea looks blue. You can see thousands and millions of people have traveled the sea over the years. 
but only one Newton was really curious about it and finally end up in discovering the Raman effect. You know, nowadays Raman spectrometer is one of the important tools in all areas of science and technology. So when you are talking about research, when you are talking about science, technology, or humanities, wherever, whichever be the subject, one should be curious. A curious mind is a dynamic mind. So I used to ask students, what is your goal in life? What is your goal in life? The goal in life is, I am studying plus two, and I am aiming for IITJ, or IIST, or NIIT, or sometimes uh, I am aiming for uh, medicine. So after that, what is your aim? If you are a medical student, next time is to go for proxy graduation or super specialization. Imagine that my aim is to become a, 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 a cardiothoracic surgeon with MZH in cardiothoracic or neurology. And I could achieve that MCH at the age of 30 or 32 or 35. So my goal I achieved at the age of 30, then what next? What next? 90% people next is to buy a car, buy a house, and their focus is entirely changed to, be, to, to have a happy life. So goal in life, actually to have a happy, comfortable life. Because I achieved, I'm aiming for IIT, I could get an IIT B.Tech degree at the age of 24 or 20, 23 or 24. I can also go for M.Tech. That's all. So our focus is mainly on money-oriented, happy, comfort life. I'm not against it. That is needed. My dear students, actually, the real goal in life should be something different. The real goal in life, if I say, if I quote the great Abdul Kalam Sar, the real goal in life should be, after my time, after my death, how I am going to be remembered. How I am going to be remembered. Whether I am going to be remembered or not. I used to ask students, can you name the name of your grandfather's father or mother? Can you name? I know 95% won't know. That means your own grandparents sacrificed their entire life for your own parents and you, and you are not able to recollect their name. So that means after my time, if I am not going to be remembered, my, this, my life, no value. I am, I am really blessed with a lot of potentials and talents. If I am not going to utilize it to the extent what I can, I have no, 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 no use. So what I am trying to tell you is that the real goal in life is something different. Not to get a job, not to have a car, not to have a house. Real goal in life is I should be, my contribution should be my name should be remembered forever, even after my time. I should be remembered. If you type your name in the Google or any other search engine, how many hits are about you? Maybe zero, maybe one, maybe five. Forget, you are students. But my dear friends, I try to fix the target that by 2040, you will have thousands of hits about your contribution. If you type your name, hundreds and hundreds of hits about you should come out. And that is going to be remembered forever. 
So my dear friends, try to contribute to the society. Whatever be your field, whether it is science, technology, humanities, whatever be the field, try to excel, try to perform outstandingly. And you will be a remembered forever. So my dear friends, be curious. And curious is a driving force for all achievements, all inventions, all discoveries. A curious mind is a, a dynamic mind. That's why be curious always. When you are reading something, when you are doing something, when you are observing something, always be curious. Always you should have an out-of-box thinking. And one more request, don't be so reverent to your supervisors or teachers. You should, you should respect them. At the same time, you should be irreverent to ask or pose questions. You should ask questions, pose questions, so that these questions will emerge as a new problem. And you are trying, you are going to solve the problem and you are going to solve or you are going to do something great to the society. With this, let me, let me, let me go through some of the life-changing discoveries happened. You can see that a great uh, scientist, Nicholas Copernicus, in the year 1543, while on his deathbed, he established that the sun is a motionless body at the center of the solar system with the planets revolving around it, including the Earth. You know that till that time, people believed that Earth was the center portion and all planets revolving Earth. So he was really curious about the solar system. And his curiosity finally ended up in establishing the theory. And you remember, while on his deathbed, he was on his deathbed. So that is a real curiosity. All of you might know about this Copernicus system and things like that. I don't want to dwell into that. Another, another interesting observation is Charles Darwin, the, 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 the theory of uh, adaptation. And, uh, you know, it was, it was one of the life-changing changing theory. Then, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, Isaac Newton. See, in 1664, Newton figured out that gravity is a force that draws object towards Earth. And he was curious about, as I told you earlier, he was really curious about why the apple is not coming down, or mango is not coming down, why coconut is not coming down. And this question enabled him to discover the gravity. So this is a very famous statement of uh, Newton. And uh, then Dimitri Mendeleev, last year, uh, the, the, the you know, entire globe celebrated the 100 year of uh, periodic table, Dimitri Mendeleev. See, another life changing. Can you imagine a world without the periodic table? All, uh, almost all, all material science development happened only because of this period. And it's for property. So, Dimitri Mendeleev, the Russian systems, sorry, for a few elements identified. So, he was able to, so Dimitri Mendeleev, arrange those elements in a periodic way. So, it was a real life changing discovery. Electricity, another great life changing discovery, Michael Faraday. So, all of you know that uh, Faraday invented this discovery after inventing all this discovery, then British Prime Minister asked him, Mr. Faraday, what is the earthly use of your discoveries? You are saying that you discovered Dynamo. What is the use? How it is going to benefit the poor? Then, Mr. Faraday, then Faraday replied, Mr. Prime Minister, 
one day you or your successor would be able to impose taxes on the public for using the benefit of my discoveries. Today, everyone knows what electricity tax. Moreover, can you imagine a world without electricity? Not only electricity, all your mobile phone or all, all, all everything, the basis is electricity. The modern world depends on electricity, energy. So great men Faraday discovered. Another important thing is Avogadro number. And this changed a lot. Telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, you know that uh, Elisha also discovered the same thing, but uh, Graham Bell was lucky to pay, uh, they, they, they submit the patent in the right time. Alfred Nobel, another great man. And uh, then X-ray. And you know, X-ray is uh, giving a lot of support to the modern science and technology, not only for the medical field, other area also. So, Rotogen, Henry Becquerel, radioactivity, and uh, one lady got really inspired, and she got two Nobel Prize. There is uh, Marie Curie, Louis Pasteur, Einstein, oh, wonderful scientist. You know, in a single year, 1905, it's known as Einstein's miracle year. And he first form formulated the special theory of relativity, established the law of mass and equivalence, created the Brownian theory of motion, and also formulates the photon theory of light. From a single brain, lot of theories, fantastic. So those people were really curious. They dedicated their life for science. And finally, it's a very famous uh, quote by Einstein. I want to know how God created this world. I'm not interested in this or that phenomena, the spectrum of element. See, discovery of insulin, Alexander Fleming, Janssen, and a lot of load, quantum theory needs bold. You know, quantum theory is the basis of nanotechnology and modern technology. And uh, Herber process and Big Bang theory and uh, Charles Babbage, the computer, you know, without computer, nobody can imagine a world. Atomic bond and Raman, our own Raman, See, with the 200 uh, rupee teles uh, spectroscope, he could establish Raman effect and got the Nobel Prize. Our own Raman. And another, another, another uh, great scientist of India, Jagadish Chandra Bose. Actually, a physicist turned into a biologist. And he was really curious, worried about the plants. And uh, he contributed a lot. Microprocessor, television, and uh, the, you can see that uh, uh, our director started the talk with the Sputnik one in 1957 and uh, Apollo mission and Viking, uh, things like that. Just a minute. Thank you. Thank you. All, 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 all such things happened and uh, we can see that DNA, another breakthrough in our, our, our science, and Microsoft, NASA Columbia Space Shuttle, and scanning tunneling microscope, and a lot of, lot of things, Mars Pathfinder, and our own uh, India's great mission, Red Planet, Mars mission, and Chandrayaan, and all those things. A lot of uh, new technologies, new challenges in science and technology, nanomaterials, fiber optics, microelectronics, laser technology, biotechnology, atomic energy, electricity, ocean research, ocean resources, space research, etc. etc. Today, why I told you that? So all these areas, all those scientists really inspired us, ignited us motivated us. So they lived, they sacrificed their entire life for the society. That's why 
all those names are will be remembered are remembered and will be remembered my dear friends try to aim a life just like that your goal you may please rewrite your goal the goal should be after my time i should be remembered my contribution should be remembered forever my name should be remembered forever einstein will be remembered forever raman will be remembered forever mahatma gandhi will be remembered forever so that is the real goal in life so i will i will talk something about nano materials and some of the applications in next couple of minutes a peep into nano world so all of you know that nano is something very close to atoms and molecules this is an atom this is a molecule you can see that hydrogen is there oxygen is there carbon is there whereas i have a fuller in is a nano material that means when i am when i am talking about nano material it is so tiny it is very close to the size of an atom look here i have a size comparison here you can see one angstrom unit and here one centimeter unit under 1 cm i have tissue and organ my heart lung liver so my bacteria if we are looking about the bacteria it is 1 micrometer whereas we are nowadays we are talking about corona 19 virus it is uh, size is something about see 1 nanometer to 10 nanometer so nanometer or nano technology is a science deals with of materials whose one of the dimension should be in between 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer it may be diameter it may be thickness it may be length so those materials coming under this size regime we can call it as nano materials or look here i have water molecule i have a tennis ball and my nano device or nano porous materials are coming very close to water molecule water is nothing but only three atoms so my nano materials or nano device is very close to this molecule look here i have you can see different types of balls and this blue ball represents a red blood cell size of a red blood cell and these are my nano material size of nano materials one can have a very good comparison of nano materials so you can see there is very very tiny compared to a red blood cell or look here i have three boxes of equal volume and size this is first box in the first box i am trying to keep put particles of 10 micrometer say pepper i can i can i can i can i can for reason of understanding say 50 pepper i i could incorporate in the first first box then i reduce the particle size of the particle from 10 micrometer to 1 micrometer same volume same area i can i can incorporate few thousands of particles so when i reduce the particle size from 10 micrometer to 1 micrometer number of particles per unit area increased from 50 to few thousand say let it be 5000 particles again i am going to reduce the particle size from 1 micrometer to 100 nanometer so when i reduce the particle size from 1 micrometer to 100 nanometer number of particles per unit area same volume same area increases tremendously when i say tremendously 5000 become 5 million so now i have 5 million particles the same area same modium what is going to happen each particle is having a surface and i can i can calculate the surface area of each particle so surface area increases tremendously reactivity increases moreover the physical properties the chemical properties will change look here some of the size dependent properties 
optical properties, electrical properties, physical properties, and chemical properties have changed. So bulk of gold, the gold is gold because of the yellow color. If you reduce the particle size of gold in the nano, yellow become wine red. The color will change. The particles are so small that electrons are not free to move about as in bulk. Because of this movement is restricted, the particles react differently with light. So simply by changing, by reducing the particle size from micro to nano, the color change, the properties change. Single oxide, the micro particle size, it can block UV, scatter visible light, and appear as white, then opaque. Same single oxide, if you convert into nano, it will block UV, but it will become transparent. Why is transparent? Because the particle is so small compared to the wavelength of the visible light that does not scatter. And so, see, simply same single oxide, when I convert it into nanoparticle, it is acting as a UV blocker. At the same time, it will act as a transparent material. Some of the properties are meaningless. You see, boiling point is meaningless because when I'm talking about nano, vapor pressure becomes less and less meaningful when you have smaller and smaller number of particles. So when you say 50 molecules or 100 molecules, there is no bubble. There are no bubbles. So such cases are also there. Gravitational forces become negligible and electromagnetic forces become dominant because I'm talking about few atoms, molecules. Quantum mechanics is used to describe motion and energy instead of classical mechanics. Greater surface to volume ratio. Random molecular motion become more important. See, by changing the particle size from micro to nano, lot of physical properties, mechanical properties, electrical properties, optical properties, chemical properties will change. So this is the beauty of nanomaterial. There are a lot of nanomaterials, nano devices. One can, one can think of nanocrystalline material, nanoparticle, nanocapsules, nanoporous material, nanofibers, fullerenes, nanotubes, nanodendrimers, and it can be used in molecular electronics, can be used in NIMS, nanofluids, nanophotonics, nanoptics, nanomagnets, etc., etc. It's a wide area, it's a fast growing area, nano materials and nanotechnology. In the old span of human activity, starting from aerospace, space, energy, medical field, agriculture, every old sphere of human activities nanoscience and nanotechnology are entering. And this is a very, very important, it's a breakthrough spectrum. In fact, it, it, this spectrum, in fact, changed the science, recent science and technology history. You all of you know that. Proto and his co-workers, they were doing some laser experiment on graphite. They observed this mass spectra of 660, and they were uh, really curious. It is unusual to get a spectra of a C60, carbon 60. They, they repeated the experiment, repeated. They were getting the same spectrum, and finally they searched, and finally end up in discovering the fullerene. You know that 30 years back, this poor man, graphite, only two uses. One used as the tip of the pencil, and second application is a, it is used as a lubricant. Now, if you search in the science director or any other area, you can see that thousands of publications are coming out with the graphene, graphene, graphite oxide, carbon nanotube, and things like that. So you'll often that graphite and diamond 
now you have uh, fullerene and uh, people are talking about the diamond the graphite c60 c70 and the graver nanotubes endohedral and graphene wonderful material graphene is nothing but if you can separate a single layer of graphite that is what is called graphene and uh, and uh, if we can take we fold the single layer for the ease of understanding let me say if we fold the single layer of graphene i could i could get single wall carbon nanotube and if you are folding multiple layers i will get multi wall carbon nanotube and uh, this is about carbon nano fiber my dear friends last century smart fibers were carbon fibers and tubular fibers because tubular fiber is having very high strength than modulus and it is acting as a bulletproof material bulletproof material carbon on the other hand again it is having very high strength than modulus but at the same time it act as a high temperature withstanding material it can withstand a temperature of 2000 and above so that it's a ther thermal protection system it can use it as a thermal protection system so you can you know that if i say 2000 to 2500 degrees celsius one can imagine the magnitude of 2000 degree i used to tell students in a winter season if you want to take a bath what what could be the temperature of the water once i asked the question and one student said sir it is 90 degree i told them it is going to your last and final bath because 90 degree can kill you see 1100 degree is the temperature of electrical crematorium where one human dead body will become ash in few minutes then you might in 2000 degree or 2500 degree so this fiber can withstand that temperature then carbon nanotubes as i told you if you can have single volt if you fold a single single layer of graphene we will get single volt carbon nanotube or if you can have multi volt carbon nanotubes and things like that the beautiful material and uh, look here this is my carbon nanotube and this is my c60 and the diameter of the c60 is very close to the elemental atoms carbon the diameter is 1.54 angstrom and nickel it is 2.5 and my c60 is having 10.8 that's why it is very close to molecules and atoms so when you are uh, when you say i'm working on nano materials and nano device that means i am going to play with the atoms or molecules so and uh, this is uh, now people are trying to develop super carbon nanotube carbon nanotube itself is a wonderful material it's a wonderful material scientists are not satisfied with that they are trying to develop a carbon nano carbon nano two which is made up of carbon nano two all the hexagons are made up of carbon nano two that's the real curiosity people are really curious and scientists are the greediest people and they should be like that and as, as i told you graphene and the wonderful material having a lot of lot of uh, uh, interesting properties i don't want to delve into that then another interesting thing is quantum dots quantum dots are small particles of semiconductor material Typical dimensions ranging from most of these system is one nanometer to ten nanometer. So that means just like an atom, it is having energy levels are quantized. Its energy levels are quantized due to the confinement of electrons. You can see that energy levels in quantum dots are quantized, confined, and uh, it can be used for uh, for a lot of applications. so depends on the depends on the size of the quantum dots one can have a different color spectra if you want to make the the the, the display device of this display of your mobile phone or laptop so you can use it because i can have various color depends on the the size of the quantum dots that's the beauty of uh, quantum dots and lot of other added advantages and uh, my dear friends people are trying to modify i have thousands of nanoparticles if i want to use it as a sensor if i use if i if i want to use it in a structural application or communication or whatever be 
I want to modify it. A lot of uh, modifications are going on. And, uh, and uh, as I told you, we can have uh, this technology can be used in energy, medicine, nano biotechnology, nano devices, optical engineering, defense and security, bioengineering, cosmetics, and nano fabrics. One interesting thing I will tell you, super hydrophobic and lotus effect. All of you know that this lotus leaf are known as symbol of purity. It's a water resistant. It's a self cleaning material. Why? Because this material is having a nano porous structure. Nanoscopic structure, surface structure, where it can act as a super hydrophobic material. A super hydrophobic material means if the contact angle is more than 150 degree, we can call it as super hydrophobic material. If the contact angle is uh, uh, le less, than, less than 90 degree, we will call it as hydrophilic. If it is uh, 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 greater than 90, we will call it as hydrophobic. But if the, the contact angle is greater than 150, we will call it as 150. It is a super hydrophobic material. And super hydrophobic material is a wonderful piece of research where I can have, I'll, I'll come to some of the applications. See, this is a case with the, the lotus leaf or lot of, lot of, lot of flower. The surface is nano structured. The water droplet will simply roll out, just like a football. Along with the water droplet, all the dirt also will go. So that's the science behind it. A lot of people are working on this lotter, lotus effect or to imitate lotus leaf or lotus effect on materials so that I can make super hydrophobic paints, coatings, and materials. And uh, this is a mechanism. If I have a, a water molecule and these are the dirt particles, this water molecule will, water drops will uh, roll out and it will take away all the dirt also. And I can have a self cleaning material. So if I have a, a super hydrophobic coated boat, because no addition between the water, so no friction, it can have a very high efficiency. In the skiing or if, imagine that I have a, a super hydrophobic coated car in windscreen and paint. So simply pouring water, all dirt will go. If I have a super hydrophobic coated clothes, simply dip in water, take it out, all dirt will go. So it's having a wide application and uh, one, a lot of people are working to develop super hydrophobic materials for various applications. Some of the next, I will, I will show some of the uh, applications of nano materials in, 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 in medicine. As I told you, these are my red blood cells and my nano device or nano particle is having only this size. Then if you see, this is a cell, my nano particle will be a spot in that cell. That means my nano particle or nano, nano device can easily penetrate into the, the cell without disrupting the stu cell structure. Imagine that, say some years back, if I say some 30 or 40 years back, somebody is having a tumor in the body, the diagnosis is mainly based on the physical examination, symptom-based physical examination. But by the introduction of the imaging technology, we have MRI scanning or CT scanning and imaging technology. One can detect cancer or tumor at the early stage. But that early detection is not early or the treatment procedure is having a lot of problems. What nanotechnology can do? Look here, these are my cancerous cells. These are the pre-cancer cells. These are the normal or healthy cells. If I am going to use a chemical, so you know that cancer therapy, there are two types of uh, treatment. One is chemotherapy, another one is radiotherapy. So usually chemotherapy is used to kill the cancer cells in the entire system. And the radiotherapy is very specific to that local area. So most of the cancer patients are uh, undergoing chemotherapy. So if somebody is taking chemotherapy, what is going to happen is that chemical is going to kill 
the healthy cells as well as cancer cells. If I imagine that uh, that patient is having some thousand or two, uh, ten thousand uh, uh, cancer cells or precancer cells, by in, by by taking that chemotherapy, he or she is going to uh, his healthy cells are also going to affect. That's why after two or three chemotherapy, one patient, very healthy patient, become very 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 uh, weak because his immunity level will come down. His healthy cells are dying. So what we can do? What we can do? Imagine that I have a quantum dots or a nanowire or a nanoparticle modified with some of the chemical moieties which, is, which are very sensitive to the cancerous or precancer cells. So you take it in the bloodstream, it will selectively go to the cancerous or precancer cells, keeping all healthy cells alive. That means by taking such nano medicine, we can keep all the healthy cells alive. So your, you, you, your immunity level will be there and you will be very healthy. Just like a paracetamol you are taking for headache or fever, you can go to school or college or workplace. So people are trying to develop such nano medicines. You can see that this is one, this is this green represents the cancer cells and pink represents the, 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 the healthy cells. And I have incorporated the, the, the modified content dots. You can see the content dots or the nanomaterials are uh, situated only at the cancer cells, keeping all healthy cells alive. That means by simple irradiation, it will produce energy and it is going to kill the cancerous or precancer cells, keeping the healthy cells alive. There are a lot of techniques and uh, people are talking about nano devices and uh, this is a cantilever technology that if I, I can have a nano cantilever with a single drop of blood, I can detect whether I have a, a heart disease or diabetics or cancer or things like that. A lot of such, such uh, uh, discussions and uh, research are going on. And uh, another area is dendrimus. And uh, dendrimus as cancer therapy means uh, it can be used as a reporter, can be used as a, a single molecule can be used as a reporter, therapeutic agent, cancer detector, and cell death monitor. So single molecule have multiple functions. So I can, I can use it and uh, I will skip all these things. And uh, another, another is uh, nano, nano materials for consumer product. As I told you earlier, for one example is uh, nano zinc oxide and things like that. Lot of, lot of, lot of industries are there with a, uh, 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 in the, the industry for the cosmetics. Another area is nanorobots. Nanorobots in your body. Maybe after 10 or 15 years, you may have a couple of nanorobots in your body. One nanorobot is going to look after your heart. One nanorobot is going to look after your brain or your liver. For example, somebody is having a, somebody is having a, 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 a cholesterol deposit in the artery, my nanorobot is going to inject a small brush or a, 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 a inject a medicine to, to dissolve the, the, the deposits. So no more heart attack, no more bypass. So this is going to happen. So nanorobots in the medical science and human body is going to be a big challenge in the near future. So a lot of studies are there, I will show Another interesting thing is nanorobots in your for dental teeth. So goodbye to dentist and Clossop and Colgate because my robots are going to work on my teeth. And uh, so this is an anti-fogging material. All these are already in the, the market. Coming to the space and other aerospace application, one can see that a lot of studies are going on on fuel cells, battery, supercapacitor, and things like that. And uh, where nanomaterials, impact of nanomaterials on next generation rechargeable battery. Probably you may know that uh, lithium ion battery and uh, uh, next generation battery, all these things, nanomaterials are widely used. Now, when you are talking about aerospace material, one can have a lot of materials used, generated from nanomaterials. It can be used for EMA protection. It can be used for quality assurance system or resin infusion system and a lot of things one can use 
And uh, so application nanoparticles for the solar cells, a lot of applications are there. And uh, you know that this may be a future material uh, uh, used for, uh, used for uh, uh, the, the space elevator uh, proposed by NASA. Uh, space elevator reported by NASA. Uh, that means a long cable extending from our one our planet surface into space at geostationary Earth orbit of 35786 kilometer. So electromagnetic vehicles traveling along this cable could serve as a mass transportation system from move, for moving people, payloads, and power between Earth and space. The cable must be made up of material with a huge tensile strength over density. Usually they are looking for nano materials, nano tubes, and things like that. Another, another interesting thing is, uh, uh, you know, that uh, sun tower proposed by NASA. So if we have one or two su such a sun tower, entire energy crisis in the world can be sought. There also nano materials are going to play a lot. lot. And uh, so you can see that uh, Netgar of Terra Plus and uh, things like that. So, in short, future space transport system may be this, a faster, better, cheaper space transport system with the nanomaterials. So it, have, it can have an integrated aerospace engine and composite aerosols and lithium batteries and things like that. And uh, my dear friends, uh, with this, I just want to stop here. Again, I just want to tell you that and there, this program, the IST school program, is to motivate the young budding scientists towards science and technology, especially towards space science and technology. And uh, as I told you earlier, my dear friends, please keep a new goal in your life. Not to get a degree, not to get a job, not to have money, not to enjoy the life. Those things are there. Those things are secondary. As I told you earlier, life is something different. Life is something different. If I can define life in the rocket language, we have a GSLV and, uh, and a PSLV rocket, India's workhorse. GSLV is around uh, 300 tons capacity weight. GSLV is around 600 ton. So if we take GSLV, if we take, consider you are each one, each student as a rocket. A rocket, so GSLV is having a, the, way, the height of a, some 17-story some building. On the top, we have a satellite, and satellite is covered with a heat shield, and uh, the entire uh, rocket says out of 600 tons, I could say 550 tons of the weight of rocket is propellants to carry three or four ton satellite into the orbit. If you are just like a rocket carrying a satellite, what is a satellite in you? Your satellite is a rock orbit. Your satellite is the orbit. What is the propellant in you? Your propellant is the knowledge in a wide perspective. Knowledge is the propellant. Imagine that our own GSLV or PSLV is half filled, is having half filled propellant and it is launching. It is going to have a, a premature death. It should be filled completely, properly filled. My dear friends, if you are just like a rocket and your propellant is knowledge, I try to fill maximum knowledge as propellant in you. Try to grab knowledge wherever possible. And these are the avenues. When you are attending a class, when you are reading a book, 
when you are doing a practical, when you are doing a project, when you are observing something, when you are interacting with somebody, all these avenues are the avenues to grab knowledge. Try to fill maximum propellant in you so that you can fly high. As I told you, your satellite is the goal in life. As per Kepler's law, if we keep this satellite in the right orbit, it will orbit just like that. So if you can put your satellite, the goal, your contribution, you will be remembered forever. And you, your satellite is having a heat shield. What is a heat shield made up of? Your heat shield is made up of lack of confidence, lack of determination, lack of focus, peerism, laziness, etc., etc. Try to break it. Try to break that shell. Just like a cocoon. Cocoon is having a shell. It is struggling to sh break the shell and coming out as a beautiful butterflies. My dear friends, you are just like a cocoon. Try to break the shell. Shell made up of lack of determination, lack of focus, lack of hard work, laziness, peerism, all sorts of things. Break it. Come out as beautiful butterflies. Fly. And this is the real goal in life. And you will be remembered forever. So work for that. When you type your name, your name should, be, should appear for thousands and thousands of times. Your contribution should be remembered forever, just like Raman, just like Einstein, just like Newton, just like Vikram Sarabhai, Vikram, just like uh, Homi Baba, just like Abdul Kalam sir, and so on. So, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, my talk is over. Thank you so much. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you for so, that, sir. Wonderful yeah. Lecture. Somebody from the uh, Sarkashatra yeah, is are, there? Yeah, they are there. They are there.